It's okay. I'll I'll uh, I'll take I'll do it like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> it would not be a stream without. Can you really hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Hi, I'm Godless Sewing from the Godless Sewing <laughs> channel. But everybody should go subscribe to Godless Sewing. And yes, again, I'm Godless Sewing. With us, as always, is Jenny. Jenny's in love. It makes me literally want to do this and sing songs, but I don't want to get copyrighted strike off the bat. Kitty, the Empress of Hell, the seamstress. How's it going? Yo, it's Kitty. Going. To be awesome. fair, it wouldn't be one of my streams if we didn't start off with technical difficulties. Um, just, just and with us, as always, is the beautiful Jen from Jen's Little Corner. <laughs> the technical difficulty herself. How are you? I'm Hi. Good. I'm good. Now, now, j just because everybody missed it, um, a little disclaimer here. I have one of the largest potty mouths in our little community. So if you're offended by that sort of shit, please fuck off. And secondly, if you're under 18, we, we love you. We think you're fucking awesome. But this really isn't the stream for you. So um, maybe go find something with cute little cats or something like that. Because hey, we say in this stream. <laughs> How about you and I have a uh, dirty mouth contest tonight? Oh, the potty mouth contest. That's a... Look, oh, don't even get me fucking us. started. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> four of us. This shit will go down right now. I was gonna join the fucking navy. <laughs> if you, if you, got you disabled. So. Are you kidding me? Right now in Southern California, it is hotter than a Mississippi whorehouse in August. Let's go. <laughs> You want to start cursing and telling bad jokes? I'm ready. It is so hot here. I don't believe in I don't believe in anything. But Satan was asking me for a so, ride so to the store the, earlier. Are the it's people so in California out there sun tanning their taint right now? <laughs> it was 111 yesterday. I went. I so I was I was alone and a little vulnerable, and I got really baked. <laughs> and I was in the air conditioning, and I was like, I want chicken and waffles. I got in my car. It was 111 <laughs> by the time I was halfway there, you know. So here we are, round tabling it up. Yeah. Be right back. We There's literally have to wait until the night because it's so hot. The planet oh, is, is fucked. <laughs> is that F-U-C-T, Jenny? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's really nice ball bearings in the wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were saying whilst we all could, no one could hear what we were talking about. But if you were lip readers, he was saying that we should have called the, the not just talking about COVID, but the Jenny doesn't have COVID, yay stream, uh, meaning me because I was in a clusterfuck area that had a few cases of COVID. Uh, but it's all right. I didn't. I don't think I've come in contact with anybody who had it. It looks like uh, I wasn't in the areas at the right time to. Have, being contact traced with anybody who had it, so yeah, I'd only have to present for a test if I sh started showing symptoms, which is good. That's good news, but it took like 24 hours for me to get that information, and I'm like, you're sitting on ten dollars no, at the time. It's super sketchy when you don't know. Yeah, it is. It's really <laughs> sketchy. It's super sketchy. There's been at least two oops. I think I hung out with someone near COVID where I've had to hunker down at least twice. And just to add to a few people who DM'd me about my tweet the other day, um, if I was suicidal, you wouldn't get a tweet from me. Um, I Because I've been suicidal before in my past, and um, you don't, I wouldn't tell anybody. I'd just fuck off and do it. Is this a tweet yeah. when you were just saying how fake everyone is, or what? Uh, it's kind of a fake thing. I, I mean... I, I don't know. I think there are some people who can be very suicidal who will cry, who will legitimately cry out for help and they need that help to get, get through that. That definitely happens. I know that's not me. If I was going to want to do it, I would have done it. If I'm crying out for help, it means I, I actually want help. So, it, so if we're going down different. this route... So if we're going down this route, I, I want to say something about Twitter that's extremely triggering. As someone who is an actual suicide survivor, it's weird to me when people go on there and like, there's a difference between, oh, I'm feeling like this and this, and then going on there every day and being like, hey, you know, it's triggering. I will mute you. <laughs> I will mute you. I, I'm going to have a whinge about my last week, which was taking my brother for assessment for liver transplant. 
that part was okay for me because mostly it involved getting up early in the morning and dropping him at the hospital and he did all these tests and then I picked him up when he was done because I did not have to be there apart from on the first day to get in between some very wide apart appointments. I could fuck off for most of the day. But that fucking off for most of the day, man, I went places that could have been dangerous to me as far as COVID. Not that I was to know that. And it, it, it also ended up with blowing a hole in the exhaust and the uh, muffler in the car, which pissed me off. But I mean, that would have happened eventually anyway, because that's how mufflers work. They wear out from the inside and then they blow holes in them. Um, but... So now I get back to where I live, and now at some point, I mean, my brother is in hospital now, actually, but again, down here, he's in hospital. So, um, but at some point, after all of that, I've got to go and get the car booked in and have the exhaust replaced and a whole heap of other crap that I wasn't expecting to have to do. So that kind of pissed me off a bit because, um, like I said, it could even be the error on the PC was an error from the catalytic converter because uh, the engine light came on. Um, and that's a concern, because catalytic converters are fucking expensive. So I'm just hoping that that was purely a back air pressure thing that the air sensor just didn't get the right figures because of the hole that was further down in the muffler. So hopefully the catalytic converter's alright and it just needs a new muffler, but it's still not going to be cheap. As Jen would know, they're not cheap. Yeah. 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 <laughs> fixing, fixing these fucking things in cars is never cheap. <laughs> Catalytic converters that cost over two thousand dollars. Yeah, I know. So I'm not. I'm not looking forward to that. If it's a catalytic converter, it's, it's going to be a bitch, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. That's what. That's what it is. But it kind of, you know, between that and some other crap over the week, it, it kind of just it, it completely pissed me off. The dog was the other thing, but I've already discussed that on our thing. My um, the day after. So you left... Life Oh, yeah, my life's been shit the last week. And no, so your life has literally turned into a country song. It has. It's like it an has. old Conway Twitty song. Out and attacks them. The mufflers kid. broke. The dog's gone. Like Yeah, the dog's <laughs> gone. The dog dog got off his chain the day after left for Perth and um, bailed up a kid, a young kid. Aggressively bailed them up. Fortunately, did not bite them. But when the rangers came to pick him up, he went for the rangers. They had to muzzle him and everything. And he was still trying to attack the other dogs in the cages next to him and everything. So at that point, you go, the dog's got a neurological problem now because he was never aggressive before. So, uh, and I'm away. So I say to council, what do you want me to do? They go, right, we're going to send you some paperwork. You have to sign it. Hand him over to us so we can put him down. Is basically that's awful. what they said, and that's dreadful because I'm not even there. You can't even see the dog. Although he probably would have gone me if I tried to see him anyway. But you kind of actually go and see your dog, who you know, it's a dog. They're one of the family, and um, so yeah. And, and I get back from Perth to discover my cat is a catnip addict, legitimately a catnip addict. This cat is 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 shaking, sitting on the table in front of me because it wants more catnip. And junkie. <laughs> it's a complete junkie. We get it, get home, get in the house, and the cat would not shut up until I gave it more catnip. I've become this cat's fucking drug dealer. There's a, there, there is something wrong with that. <laughs> That's how it usually goes. That's how it usually goes with cats yeah. and people and anything in general that you will get hooked on a stimulant. And, and, and you know what the dumb part about what it is? What are we, though? That's what, like... Like literally all of us, like we're driven by impulses, you know. If you the cat's like, Oh, this is awesome, I want more and more <laughs> until I gorge, you know. Well cat it's not just cats. I mean there's animals all all kinds of animals in the animal kingdom who who know certain ways to get loaded, you know. Lemurs are the best. Elephants know, you know, they got th certain Oh yeah, they get they drunk. Can... They get really drunk elephants, do <laughs> Have you ever heard the expression "drunk as a lemur"? No, no. but I know the Dolly, Dolly berries have gone a little bit off to get drunk. <laughs> so, I heard it on The Simpsons, and I did research. This was a long time ago, before Google, before you could say the A word, you know. <laughs> and lemurs get loaded, just like koalas, just like you know, they get loaded and they fall out of the tree. They get so high they fall down. <laughs> Lemurs are awesome. <laughs> they are just such an adorable animal. <laughs> yeah, this this cat. The, the annoying part with this cat becoming a druggie um, is that the the whole thing was she's got really bad breath. So I thought I'd, I'd buy her some 
catches that you know were for their teeth for cleaning their teeth and getting their teeth back and i figured i know how i'll make sure she'll chew them and eat them because she's a fussy little leader i'll get ones with a little bit of catnip in them yeah that was a bad plan that was a really bad plan okay my kid's not eating so i'm gonna put crack in their food yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah I, I guess that was technically what i did <laughs> Yeah, it, it, no, it, was a, it was more a case of, I've got medicine for this child. How can I make sure they eat it? I know what I'll do. I'll douse it in alcohol. <laughs> That's like putting Coke in something. 20 minutes later, someone's like, man, I, can't, I, don't, I don't even like this, but I can't stop eating it. <laughs> you know what it is? This is, well, this no, one, is of the, one of the uh, recommended treatments for a baby back in the 50s and stuff um, that that was cranky, cryy, and wouldn't sleep is, is uh, slam some whiskey into its milk bottle. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So no, or, I, I you, or you dip the it. dummy um, in rum or something like that. And that, that, that okay. is legitimately what I've done to this cat. <laughs> well, no, like, um, one of the reasons why, you know, people, you know, are addicted to, like, fast food is because they put extra salt and sugar in it because your body yeah. craves those things. Yep. Like, Chef D. There's a fuck ton of sugar in Chef Boyardee ravioli. Like, a fuck ton. Or even, um, like, Tortino's uh, pizza rolls. Isaiah got hooked oh, on yeah. it. Go look and at the ingredients. So yeah. So much sugar. <laughs> yeah. So much fucking sugar. Why the fuck you need sugar in something savory? Exactly. Just like, well, well, uh, I eat it. To be fair, that is exactly tomato. how you make something sweet and sour. That you have a little the bit of honey products, and then you add... Products, um, are well known to, to put sugar in to help cancel out the acidity of the app of, of the uh, uh, tomato. It's not okay. just wanting to sweeten it and, and get you addicted. People put sugar with tomato to kill kill the acidity. It's yeah. funny that you would say that, Jenny. I'm allergic to tomatoes, and there are certain products that the tomato is so diluted. And no, I'm not looking at my glasses, Jen. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> My eye is completely swollen right now because I got fancy pizza. I was showing off, trying to be, you know, Mr. Moneybags. And I got this really fancy pizza. They use real tomatoes. And I woke up and my eye was like fully puffed out. Like, and it's been three days. Yeah. I have a real tomato allergy. It looks yeah. like you've got a really, really bad yeah. style. That's what it is. And it's all grown. But the, the reason I bring I it up is because it. I eat certain things <laughs> that have tomato products in it, and I don't – nothing happens whatsoever. When I eat – so so I'm like – I can literally tell if it's if it's um, real tomatoes or not because in America, we eat a lot of the substitutes and don't know it. Yeah. You know? Like, we eat a lot of substitutes in our food, and that's not necessarily what you're eating. So there's like – in the tortino pizza rolls and you know what you can come after me on this one i don't think there's actual tomatoes in their pizza rolls <laughs> well did you hear so, what Subway got, what was accused of uh last week i think it was last week maybe yeah last week um somebody did some um, um genetic and, and lab research on their tuna and found that there is no tuna in their tuna oh it's wow tuna-less. it's tuna-less tuna i saw that and you know it's funny I eat tuna at least uh, two or three times a week. I'm addicted to the stuff. <laughs> Didn't so. Um, fun fact: salt will cut sweetness in something. So if you're making buttercream, like um, you know, essentially homemade buttercream is powdered sugar and butter and maybe a little bit of like cream or milk to to thin it out if it's too thick. Um, and if it gets to be too sweet, because you have to keep adding powdered sugar until you get the right texture. If it's too sweet, you can actually add a pinch of salt and it helps cut sweetness down. Which is why our our cool drinks and stuff like that have so much uh, sweetener and salt in them because they, they put all the salt in tact like a preservative and then they have to put in extra extra um, sweeteners to make up the fact they've got so yeah, much bloody it's... salt. <laughs> As someone who's gone overseas, there is a big difference between American food. I eat those, Jenny. Between American food and everywhere else because we put salt in everything. Like, do you remember the time where we compared Pepsi's, Jen? Yeah. Yeah. There's like, our there's in a less can. Salt than and our, like, um, like, a half of a liter bottle is the equivalent of a two liter or a three liter in Australia. We put That's so really much sugar. Good. 
in America, it's unreal. I did it, Stool and I did it one time, and ours is double the uh, sugar allotment in the UK. <coughs> in America, we put preservatives in everything, and that's why every once in a while I come across real tomatoes and they kick the crap out of it. I forget that I'm allergic to tomatoes because it, you know, I have a low lover allergy, but I wake up and I look like I, I got in a bar fight. And I haven't had. Can you have cooked tomatoes or, or it's raw tomatoes that set you off or all tomatoes? Oh, it's all. But it's like actual real tomato. So if they're diluted, I can eat them. Yeah. You know? But, but this place is like old school Italy style where they take the slices and they put the cheese on top. It's it, And I like that bougie style. And I, you know. And I got a hair up my duff, and I called them, and I paid for it. <laughs> Food allergies are, are, are funny, though, because back in my day, uh, my parents were told, hey, this kid has a tomato allergy, so they fed me more tomatoes, thinking that it'll it'll make the allergy go away, and the allergy never went away. I, You know, I'm grown, and I still have it. Well, they recently have also been um I, I don't know what 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 point the research is at but they've been testing and, and trying to find a way to to give children peanut butter you know just a little itty bit at a time to get them not allergic to peanuts peanut allergies are scary though because the person yeah. could, could like pass out right in front of your face Oh, I've, I've had that happen. I've, I've been in a room where somebody does. This woman I know, she touched a cookie that had some peanuts in it. Ooh. Anaphylactic shock. That's what I'm saying. I'm part of that weird um, crowd that carries around an EpiPen. Because <laughs> I've had to give somebody who's probably watching the Heimlich eight times in their life. And they're allergic, you know, and I'm allergic to everything. So I'm that overprepared parent. Ever prepared or ever prepared? Either way, I'm ready for anything. Bring it. <laughs> and I get my CPR, my CPR card renewed every year. I take a class, even though I could teach it at this point. <laughs> but you, but you're not allergic to the COVID shot. No, like I'm, um, I'm gonna take it, but I, I'm just scared it's gonna put me out. I don't want to be a statistic because I have a really low immune system. And I went and got checked for it and everything, and they told me, like, oh, we still don't know, but yeah, take it. Shouldn't, shouldn't worry about that, because unlike other types of vaccines, it does not have any um, live virus in it. It's just it, it's just a plug. Oh, I know. The only reason I haven't got it is because my health insurance is really um, going out of the way to make sure I don't die. Because <laughs> they make enough money off of me. <laughs> they're just making, they're making sure their cash cow doesn't die on them. <laughs> they're actually no um they're going out of their way to help me this time they really are i get weekly i get weekly checkups and everything like you know because they care about people that can't breathe yeah so i can't grab too much That's speaking it. of which, hold on i'm about to go on my soapbox <laughs> so in when america do you not crawl on your soapbox well i'm five nine so technically i always need a soapbox <laughs> So, and I live in the land of giants. So everybody else is like, oh, I'm 5'9". Well, not where I live. Everybody's tall. So recently, I've battled Spectrum. <laughs> For the past five days, um, I've been fighting them because my upload speed was so slow that I wasn't getting what I was paying for. And the whole reason I'm bringing this up is because... Across America, Karens are getting a bad name. Karens aren't racist. Those people are just racist. They're not Karens. They're just racist. People who habitually complain are complainers. They're not Karens. Today, I put my Karen hat on. I whined, whinged, fake cried, literally got the manager, called the corporate office, and magically my upload speed is where it should be. So all I'm saying is you should get what you're paying for. So Godless Sewing says always be a Karen. And don't let the stereotypes oh, get always, you down. But be prepared to be a Karen if you need to be. 
I don't play around. I'm accused of being a Karen if they could go after something legitimate like you did. I, I'm old school. I was raised by boomers. I just want to get what I'm paying for. That's it. I don't want anything extra. I just want what I'm paying for. You know, I, I don't, I, I, and they were offering me all this stuff, and I'm like, no, just give me my effing internet. Because I have the hockey channel. I, I watch hockey in Russian. I watch Canadian channels. Like, they really hook me up, but their internet stinks. So, Spectrum, you stink. I can smell you from, from here. You smell. <laughs> Five days I had to fight every everybody, and guess what? Two two dudes showed up. They went and they fixed my box. I think everybody needs their box fixed every once in a while, so it'll be less whiny and complaining. And we're not cursing <laughs> on this stream. <laughs> I, I agree. Everyone needs to have something done with their box occasionally. <laughs> no, but my whole point is, if I hadn't said anything, they would have just let my Wi-Fi go back to the nineties. You know, I would. My speed was getting so slow. I, I there was no point even in going in my stream yards anymore. You know, and like I said, you get what you pay for. Is that wrong? Am I wrong? Let's discuss that. <laughs> no, I, no, you're I right. You should get what you pay for. I wasn't whining over pickles. They they raised the price on everything at Michael's, and I shut my mouth. I shut my mouth. I posted it in the sewing circle group, but then I shut my mouth. Yeah. You know, I didn't get all Karen with them. When I saw the price had literally doubled, literally. Well, I still contend that you bitching at, at Spectrum to get the proper speed you're paying for, that's not being a Karen. Being a Karen is is like when I was in a Taco Bell once many years ago, and I'm waiting in line, and there's, there's this obviously suburban North Shore Nancy, which is what we call Karen. <laughs> <laughs> the North Star of Milwaukee uh, County is is very wealthy, very very wealthy. And uh, anyways, um, this North Star was in in Taco Bell, and she ordered a um, a large drink, but for some reason the the kid behind the counter gave her a medium drink and charged her for a medium drink. Okay. And at that time, the price difference is like 10 cents in a, in a couple of ounces. And she started ripping into this kid like he committed fucking murder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, he, she, and she's not just talking about the soda and the price and, and the error of, of you know, and, and his job. She's going at him as a person, as a human being, you know. And I just I just couldn't take it. And I, and I reached in my pocket, and I pulled out a dime, and I stuffed it in her hand, and I said, shut the fuck up, here's a dime, leave the kid alone. <laughs> you know? And she just, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know, um, I worked in my early 20s, I worked um, a, a couple of fast food places. The night shift in any downtown area should be paid hazard pay. If you work night shift in a, anywhere, you should get hazard pay. We had to walk people to their cars. People were threatening our lives. You know, it was the worst. And Jenny, back in my day, we used to call Karen's uh, Zsa Like, you, who do you think you are, Zsa Zsa Gabor? <laughs> back in my day. <laughs> There's also a case that sometimes managers <clears throat> create part of the problem. Because if you, go, if you are somebody and you, you, if you've had something happen and you go back and complain about it, uh, management have this attitude that, that it has to be taken to the extreme because their employer fucked up. Uh, well, people fuck up all the time. I've I've had it where I had a, a cashier give me the wrong amount of change, and it was twenty bucks difference. So that's something I'm going to walk back in and, ask, and sort that out. You know, if they. Well, again, that's that's you know that's different than ten cents in a yeah, soda. Yeah, but <laughs> when after I did it, the manager came out. I got my $20 back, and then they said, oh, do you want to make a formal complaint about the employee? And I'm like, why? I got my money. They made an honest I've... mistake. What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> when when I was younger, I legitimately got spit in my face over pickles. Someone threw a sandwich in my face. Um, and, you know, and when I say in the downtown area, I'm not talking about homeless people that do this. These are people's moms. These are, are someone going to work having a bad day. It was a grown um, woman who threw a soda in my face my first week working at Carl's Jr. in Portland, Oregon. 
she doused me at like seven in the morning and I had to work the rest of <laughs> What's that? I got to be I got to be I was sixteen years old working at a I you said 60. I was gonna go, hang on. <laughs> No, 16. 16 yes. I was working at Regal Cinemas, and uh, we had, like, a cappuccino machine, and we did fancy coffee and stuff. This woman ordered um, a coffee, and so I make her, her coffee. She wanted, you know, a large coffee, so it was just regular coffee. But um, when she asked for creamer, like, I gave her, you know, the little non-dairy uh, creamer packets that we had. And she was yeah. like, no, I want liquid creamer. I was like, we don't have that. So she fucking throws the coffee at me. Oh. the fuck out of my hands. Like, I had to have an employee <laughs> help me, like, wrap my hands and everything like that. Management did nothing. Do you know, in, in, here it in Cal... awful. <laughs> and, you know, if that happened nowadays, that person would have gone to jail. If I live in California, Karen. <laughs> you can't just do that to people. But, like, that's awful. But managers that's would awful. rather protect their image to the public in a lot of cases than, um, than no, I protect agree. their employees. And, and I find that that's a little bit disgusting. That, that There has to be a balance there. I always used to say when when I co-owned a oh. computer store, I, was, um, I always used to say... Um, we don't say in here the customer is always right. You show the customer a bit of respect, but they're not always right. And if they're wrong, you fucking tell them. Yeah. See, but that's different in Australia. In America, so, we are entitled. <laughs> yeah. Well, then those people are here too. It's just that it, you've got to... I mean, no, it, it's worse <laughs> than that. Yeah, go, Kitty. Like, um, at the at the Regal that I work... Oh, sorry. At the Regal that I worked at, not only did they not care about that, but there was a manager that was, like, fucking plying teenagers with alcohol. I reported that to corporate, and they didn't care. Um, they were having their underage employees, their 16-year-old employees, clock out and work off the clock because we weren't legally allowed to be on the clock past 10 p.m. Oh, that makes me so and mad. And... Like, they would say they'd write in your hours later. Like, I reported this to corporate when um, I left that job, and they didn't care. It's lazy stuff like that, why we have a million laws here. We're, yeah. we're, I live, we have a million laws now because of stuff like that. If, if you, yeah, if no, you Regal are, Cinemas is terrible. That's awful. If, if you are a worker and you are confronted with that... <laughs> blatant of, a, of abuse of, of labor laws, all you have to do is pick up the phone and give a call to the um, State Department of Labor, whatever they're called. Um, or the Better Business Bureau. Or Industry Labor and Human Relations. You know, there's a lot of different names, but the state the state agency that handles that, and they will go after these these bastards. And The BBB and does it, too. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was 16, so I didn't really know. Yeah, I didn't know to do that. Yeah, like, again, yeah, I mean, this was don't. 20 years ago almost now. Like, I'm 34. I was 16 at the time. So, but to this day, I really, I, I don't go to Regal Cinemas just because I don't want to support that company because they're that terrible to their employees, you know? The first employer I reported to Department of Labor was when I was uh, 18. <laughs> and he was he was tr cheating the fuck out of employees not paying anybody overtime <laughs> and and telling them that they had to work before work without overtime standard pay you got paid but no overtime even though the law says clearly anything after eight hours you get time and a half um and he wouldn't he wouldn't give let anybody take breaks um you know just a whole just a list of, of oh. labor violations and you know, I tried to negotiate with them privately that I said, look, Tony, I know that this, 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 this are are directly against labor law in this state. Now, I, how about if you how about if you compensate me correctly and I'll shut the fuck up? <laughs> and, and he called me a little shit and, and told me to really? get the hell out. Yeah. And so I called the Department of Labor and they nailed him for almost a half million dollars. <laughs> in 1974 
Oh, so that was like a billion dollars back then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it damn near put him out of business. Because half a million now is still a lot of money. Holy yeah. cow. Holy cow. The, pro- the problem is, as someone who is an employer, like I was um, saying earlier before we started to Isaiah, like, if you, and, and I say this in life, if you do it right the first time, you don't ever have to deal with any of that. No. At my job, we have PTO. People, like, rarely get fired except for extreme circumstance. And because of that, we rarely have problems. Don't get me wrong. There's still every once in a while people who have lost their damn mind, you know, but they get canned on, on the spot, you know. What, is, what does PTO stand for? Paid time off. Oh, okay. So, you you know, you rack up a certain amount of time and then you're like, hey, um, I need a day off. Like, okay, you got PTO. You can take the day off and get paid for it. Comp time. Yeah. I'm not here to waste anyone's time. Ever. <laughs> That's my thing. Like, if you work for me, I'll make sure you're hooked up just so my lazy ass can sit at home and do this. <laughs> I'll make sure everybody has every incentive on earth to, to work and be thing, happy. Uh, employers, em, sorry, employees that have those sort of benefits in their job will tend to work harder than those who don't because oh, they yeah. know that if they need a day off to do something, they're not going to have to go and argue with their boss about it. They can just go up and say, oh, I need to take a PTO. And the boss goes, yeah, sure, fine, go do it. You and, they, know? and they tend to not, you, you know, you always will find an abuser, but they, the overall majority are, will tend to not abuse privilege like that. No? To the point where it's shocking. Because every once in a while, you'll get that person that their grandparent has passed like six times. <laughs> you're like, hey, man, you're just a liar. Like, come up with a better excuse, you, you know? You also get that person who you look at their thing and they've got like 200 PTO days up their sleeve because they've worked for you for 10 years and never taken yeah. one. And you have got to go to them and say, you need to take some time off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, with them, you just like, honestly, um, with those people who kind of checks, especially yeah. because when people rack up that much time, they're like, oh, my engine died, but I got 15 years of PTO, <laughs> you know, like it helps people out. It, it's like it, 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 you know, yeah. yeah. And like in a place because of my parents, people do not quit. So people really have worked there since they got out of high school in 1970 mm-hmm. something. Because the conditions so are right, and people feel like they've got a job for life that they can trust that, you know, their boss isn't going to kick them out because they had to take a couple of days off because a family member died in two yeah. states over and they have to go for a drive. You know, it's... No, they're they're harder on me than any employee. <laughs> it's, there, it's, it's well <laughs> through, through studies and stuff on labor and, and, and employee relations and stuff that the more autonomy you give an employee... The more honestly you deal with them, the better that you reward them. Um, you know, in other words, the, the more fair that you treat them, the longer they stay there, the less trouble they are. They get sick less often. Yeah, so they're just it. It absolutely solves most labor problems that people bitch about. And you look at the people that are having a horrible huh? employment, and it's, it's because their boss is an asshole. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you gonna say, Kitty? And. There was a study recently that it found that if people felt like they were being underpaid, then, you know, morale and performance were impacted negatively. But if they thought they were being overpaid, they actually worked harder to try to earn that money because, you know, they felt appreciated. And they also didn't want to feel like they'd be replaced with somebody, you know, who might take, you know, do the job for less money because they... (laughs) They felt like, no, I'm going to earn every penny, mm-hmm. and they had better morale, and they felt like, you know, they enjoyed their jobs more. Yeah. So, I have, my, my we need last, to do better in this country. My last actual job where I worked for somebody and was getting a W-2 and stuff, I was the manager of this um, uh, color processing film lab, and there was this woman who just worked her ass off. She was very bright, very, very confident, um, and, I was, and I was the manager, you know, and I had... I was hired and I was there for six months, okay? And and she'd been there for years. And they didn't put her in the manager job because she didn't want it. Okay, fine. Then when um, 
when evaluation time came around, we have I happened to get my six month at the same time she got her one year. And the guy who owned the owned the shop didn't give her a raise. Claimed that oh well you know well actually it, that was fairly vaguely legitimate because it was a time where film was starting to go yeah down down that down, down that um, ramp. Um, but he offered he he meant to give me a raise, and I knew that she hadn't gotten her raise. I said, no, I won't take it. You give it to her. My job is easy compared to what she does. You give it to her. And and he wouldn't. He wouldn't do it for her. He says, no, that's just, that's not fair. I said, what do you mean it's not fair? I'm the manager. <laughs> you know? It is entirely fair. Ultimately, he gave her the uh, the raise and she just, she was just absolutely slack jawed that, that an employer would actually do something like that. It's just you gotta do right. You just I learned it. from my um, my parents. Every Christmas, they give people Christmas bonuses. Ugh. I've just I've learned like you hook people up, they will they'll work their tails off. And um, something um, I go out there and work just as hard next to the people, so they see me like, hey, this guy who runs the place is actually helping me. You know. I don't know. I, I think it helps when they, when you see the boss actually doing. So when I come and say things, it's not because I'm talking out of the, out of the side of my mouth. It's because I actually know what I'm talking about. Hey, if the boss empties the trash basket just like I do, they're they're pretty much a god to me. I do because I have OCD and it annoys me and it's hot here. So we get bees, we get bumblebees. If you, and like... um. I recycle, so I have this huge thing in the shop, and I'm I am that guy who looks in the can and I'm like, who's the psycho who doesn't recycle? <laughs> and I'll pull a coke can out of the trash and be like, who's the crazy person trying to kill a planet? You know. <laughs> but I I'm weird. I'm big on recycling. I'm huge on that. Hey, side note, you know the little triangle with arrows and the, and the number for plastic. Mm-hmm. That was um, created and, and um, promoted by a woman in Wisconsin. Was it really? Yes, it was. Oh, wow. And you know, there was a topic of something I wanted to talk about, and I completely forgot because the J's kicking in and the T's working. It, it took her a number of years, but it, of course, gained international acceptance. Yeah. But yeah, I, a woman in, next door in Wisconsin. I bitched about Pride. No, I haven't bitched about Pride yet. Have I oh, bitched about Pride yet? Oh, wait, we haven't bitched a problem. No, no, you know what? And, I, and I'll tell you why. Because I have cable television, and every channel I put on now has a Pride logo on their, on their, you know, on their, to show you what channel you're watching. And it, I think it, it's just kind of gross. I, I put in the, the sewing group, I put the, um, the one with hockey, had the Pride logo on their thing. And like, does the average hockey fan care about Pride? Because they were really ticked off about when the NHL took the knee for Black Lives Matter, you know. And I'm pro Black Lives Matter, but I'm just saying, like, the I don't know where do we draw that line with corporations over sponsoring events and movements? Where is it? Where is that gross line? Because to me, I, I'm I'm much more on the streets kind of guy, trying to help people. So uh, I don't know. This also ties back to something I actually wanted to talk about the other day before I wasn't able to do the stream yesterday, which was family friendly. Because one of the problems of having this corporate sponsor, that some of the corporate sponsorships is they want to dictate how things should be done. And then you have this concept of, oh, Pride's got to be family friendly, which we have had a discussion yeah, but... about before. And to a certain degree, I don't necessarily have a problem with that because there are young people who are part of LGBT and they also deserve to be a part of Pride to a certain extent. But when yeah, you're but even in the 80s, how things right. should happen, it's fucked up. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's been known since the 80s. If you don't want to see someone's ass cheeks, don't go to Pride. Because yeah. you're going <laughs> to exactly. see someone's ass cheeks. And that was back in like the button up days where it was just ass cheeks, you know? And, and to now be fair, <laughs> if you go to the beach in Australia or pro mostly, probably California, <laughs> you're going to see someone's ass cheeks. 
like I said, like I said before, the pride in Portland was weather contingent. So people were dressed to the tees because it, you know, it's not ass cheeks weather. <laughs> you know, and I get it. And other cities are, are more reserved. The, like a, a, a pride in Memphis might be different than a pride in Long Beach, California. A pride in Georgia is different than San Francisco pride, where it's promoted to show your nalgas. To be fair, though, it seems to be if you come from a... Although, no, I just... I, I'm going to continue my thought, and then Kitty's going to correct me. I know this is going to happen. I was going to say, it seems to be that if you come from a hotter climate, you tend to be a little less prudish about what people wear because it's fucking hot and you need to get a bit naked. But I just, as I was saying, I realized that doesn't describe Florida at all. <laughs> the, the problem with the problem with pride festivals and stuff in like Minnesota or in Canada is that nobody is making the rainbow the rainbow colored parkas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, it, like, San Francisco is like Rio, where people go all out. I went to, you know, one of the greatest things I ever did was I went to a Day of the Dead fest festival in, down, in, in Mexico, in DF, in downtown Mexico City. It was surreal. People were walking around with face paint. They had these giant skeletons with, like, five people um, holding them, fireworks were going off everywhere. People, were, it was an extravaganza. It was unexplainable. That's what like my first real pride was. I don't expect every city to to replicate that, you know. And I'm not here to gatekeep. The one thing that ticks me off is when we start getting rules from corporations. And I said this before: turfs are starting to complain about pride because. They're, they, you know what, they count too. You know, they're under the umbrella as well. If you want, you know, but the problem is I don't go to a party to complain about it. I would never go to a party to hand out leaflets like, hey, join this hate group. <laughs> and the <laughs> problem know? with these conservative, because it is, it is a conservative thing. These these hate groups that, that are funded by conservative places is that they're, they're wedge issues. You find a wedge issue where you think you can turn public opinion. And at the moment, they're trying to do that with trans issues, because there's so many people who don't understand trans issues. But as and we've seen in Hungary uh, and, right, other, and right, other countries, right, right, well. yeah. Oops, sorry, Jenny. Uh, I want you to. Oh, whoops, wrong side. Can you see it? Oh, wrong side. There it is. Oh, wrong side. There we go. Oh yeah, the stitching. It's my pride stitching to tell people to f off. Yeah. So, so what? You... <laughs> I um, I have an opinion. I love you, babe. No, I do. But the tea's working. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, no. Um, where was I? <laughs> Stay away from pride. No, I wasn't. No, what I was saying was no, that sorry. um. Like, like your example of the example for this is the big example. For this is Hungary. They started off with a wedge issue of trans people, and we've got to remove rights from trans people. Rah, rah, rah. Uh, and this, and basically the LGBTQ community in Hungary fractured. Then they said, "Oh, we've got to protect our bit of it, so we'll throw the trans people to the wolves." And then they decided, "No, we'll attack bi people. We'll attack asexual people. We'll attack." And they've gotten to the point now where it's completely illegal to have a, even a, call yourself gay in Hungary and you can be thrown into prison for it. So yeah. you, you've got a complete thing where you've gone from, you attack with a wedge issue, separate the community and then fuck everybody. So as part of the LGBTQ plus community, stick together. We have to, we, we're a small group, gr we're a small part of the community. Anyway, we all have to stick together. If we let one part fracture, if we give one group up and throw it under the bus to try and protect the rest of it, they will get us all. They will fuck us all. Because there are so many conservative, bigoted, asshole people in this world, they will push through on that until they get what they want. And they know oh, yeah, a lot of that with Trump. So don't people, fucking give people up, people. People need to remember that every revolution that has existed um, eats its own. <laughs> they Ever. Always, they always purge after their victory. Always. 
and we have I'll to wait. not do this. There has to be not a purge. I know, I uh, know, gays and lesbians. You got, but you got gay marriage. Yay, wonderful. Don't give up. Keep fighting. We have to fight the big fight. It's not over yet. There is persecution of all of us on the LGBTQ plus spectrum. Fight it. Get through it, and all that. I think the problem is. <laughs> hey, the hey problem I, is... I, I just got to point out. Snoopy is my niece, Peter. For anybody who isn't aware of this, um, <clears throat> apparently I've been told off about by my young niece, who is five for swearing. And oh! there was a disclaimer at the start of this show, Pete, that this was not for young people. <laughs> what about poopy? Can we say poopy heads? And uh, yeah, well, I we'll say be... mother. I say mother poopy. trucker a lot. Mother trucker. Mother trucker. Oh yeah. <laughs> or or six. Six. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot. She just had her birthday. She's six. Are any of you aware of the Supreme Court decision that came down in the last uh, 48 hours? Which one? They um, decided that the appeal for Virginia to reinforce or to bring back... The, the court said to, to Virginia, your bathroom law is unconstitutional. And they appealed and it's gone through the courts. And it's finally up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, no, no. What, what that appeals court decided stands. And and the, law, oh, so, and the law gets thrown out. So we still live in America. That's cool. We still live in America. This, this, <laughs> this court is, is just, it continues to amaze me. Me too. Me too. Because they're actually upholding the law how it should be. I wonder if, I wonder if a couple of them don't actually have trans people or LGBT people in their families so that they're aware of their of their issues and, and, and the difficulty it is. To well, you can, you can see from outer space that they are quite literally attacking, you know, the problem is, in, and you know, I don't want to go in the America, just in the little American box, but in America, if let, let's, you know, let's take out all the politics if you're born here, you're entitled to certain things, regardless of who or what you are. And the fact that certain states are trying to take that away from people should scare everybody on the left and the right. Should scare everybody. Because like Jenny just said, once they're done purging us, they're going to come after you. They're going to be like, what about the guys who didn't have the MAGA trucks and didn't wave the flag? You know, they're going to come after all the moderates. That's how it, al it, always, it always goes down that way. It does. It does. So you you have to stop it in the butt. You have to, ah! nip it in the butt. You have to kick their kick their asses to the curb to start off with, or else they will just roll back everybody's rights and try to turn this is back to the fifties and sixties or worse. So, hey, Lone, I missed I missed the Lone Wanderer. Sorry. Hey, Lone, how's it going? Uh, There's a brilliant statement by the Lone Wanderer. If somebody, if you want to read it out, babe. <laughs> Just wait, and next year it'll be the Macy's Pride Parade sponsored by Chick Fil A, get fifty percent off of your purchase and a free chicken sandwich when you go back in the closet. It's true. <laughs> it is. No, it's it, true. It is so heading that way. Um, oh. and this is this is why um I went off about how L.A. Pride you have to buy tickets, and I understand what they're trying to do. They're pricing people out of it because of COVID. But also, it's unfair to people like me who are a part of that neighborhood, because in at least in Santa Monica, it's held in a specific part of the neighborhood, and that neighborhood is a part of certain people's lives, who continue to go down there, continue to pump money into it, and it used to be an open air festival, and now they closed it because of the popularity of Pride. Can can I give my corporate sponsorship opinion? Okay. <laughs> okay, you, you, and I, you and I differ on this one. Um, it's my feeling that it, it's first of all a, a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. uh, when when corporate are sponsoring, they're doing a good thing, and I believe that's true because when corporate stands behind a group, things happen. Agree. Okay. And things need to happen right now. It needed, it's needed it all along. It's needed it since the fifties. Yeah. Um, but it's finally it's finally getting some traction, and and LGBT are are gaining ground. You know, nineteen fifteen or twenty fifteen, the the um, the marriage uh, law change. 
and now it's the trans people's need for for help and corporate is slow to respond to, to the gay issue but i think part of that is because everybody is is social social justice warrior exhausted exactly. I don't know what you call it um you know everybody's tired of issues and crises and, and all this kind of stuff but they're they're starting to pick up on it more and i and i think that yeah there's everybody's pushing everybody's got a logo this year you know that you did see in years past you know like major league baseball every damn team has a version of their logo with the rainbow with the rainbow flag in it somehow um every hockey team i I get how i get how that's tiring to look at and oh man you know it's but it's it's helping us it's helping to protect us it's helping to get laws changed and for now it's okay if corporate starts to get to the point where they're going to start saying no you can't do this or you can't do that (laughs) no okay 100 percent hold on hold on 100 percent. i agree with you um it just offends me that i have to pay money to go show to go to go show my nalgas that's all as somebody who's gone every year is 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 you know what though you know you know the people who hate change the most are the old school are the the people who were there the people who were like oh kids you have no idea what i was you know i fought for your rights so i'm going to i'm going to bitch a little bit because they're changing something that um used to be free that i think should be free what are you the know Oh, it goes to one of the largest LGBTQIA plus centers in America that does more um, help for homeless youth than I'll put. I'll put any organization up. Come, come DM me, and we'll see. And I, I'm not bitching about it. I, you know, what, and I'll tell you, it's kind of like when pot first became legal. It was weird to me. So being accepted, it just being on the corporate everything, it's just weird to me because I remember walking down the street in Vegas and someone screaming faggot at me because I was on the wrong side of town, you know? So it's just weird to me to have, you know, corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just strange. I'll, I'll, I'll quit bitching about it. It's just, I'll get used to it, but uh, it's just weird. It's weird, it's, it's weird to think about, say, pegging for Chrysler, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yuck. If the, if, uh, Jenny, if Jenny the Chrysler is sponsored by Chrysler, does that mean we could use the, <laughs> the Pride could use the Chrysler building as a um, as a phallic symbol of gay pride? I, I, just, I just picked Chrysler. I don't even want to say their name, but there's a, there's a lube that was uh, sponsoring Pride, and I was like, "Oh, you're effing kidding me! You should, you guys should be given up for free for as much." <laughs> People under the umbrella yeah, buy your the product. Thing, the other thing about corporate corporate America is <laughs> you know, they they understand demographics, and if you look at the democrat demographics of uh, of of well, gay males, um, you'll find that their income level is very very high. Uh, that their educational level is very very high. Yep. Yep. They don't have kids for the most part, so they have all this disposable income uh, yeah. to spend on goodies. And corporate America wants some of that cash. Oh, most yeah. people under the umbrella here run stuff. So most people that are LGBTQIA plus in Southern California are not broke. You know that's why it was weird during the election when um, there, like Trump paid um, millions of dollars to put a fake Trump sign that looked like the Hollywood sign on the freeway. And they put it to, they made sure all the black people going to work drove past it. <laughs> Cause they put it on a specific freeway, you know, it's just out here. It's shocking to people, you know, yeah. uh, times change. Like what did, I hate to get all sci-fi, but what did Kirk say to um, Chancellor Gorkon in, in the sixth um, Star Trek movie? You know, the hardest thing about being in the new world is living in it. Because they were the old war dogs, they wanted they wanted to, um, you know, kill each other. But there was peace, and so they had to live in this world that, that they didn't want to because there was peace, and they hated each other. You know, 
that's me and corporations. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to give out my CV or anything, but I've gone to more than a few protests when I was younger to tell them, you know, get out of my country, certain banks, <laughs> you know. Like, so it's weird to me that those same corporations that, that LGBTQIA plus people used to boycott now have a giant pride flag and are um, sponsoring pride. It's just it's the times have changed. Yeah, yeah, it, it it is it is weird. I completely agree with you on that. But as long as they're as long as they're in my court and helping me, I can swallow a lot of gold. Yeah, and a lot of other stuff too. You know, so <laughs> apparently, you just got your ass slapped, Jenny. I just got what your ass slapped <coughs> by Lone Wanderer. Oh, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was younger, um, because I was Georgie Porgy, it wasn't rare for me to be walking around with young women, and people would whistle at us. And as the man, I would always turn around and say, thank you. I've been working out. Every single time, everybody oh, you, laughed. You, 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 you were this Georgie Porgy. Georgie Porgy put the pie, kissed the girls, and made them cry when the boys came out out to play he kissed them too then ran away Ooh, i like that <laughs> cut that that's going in godless sewing greatest hits i'm cutting that too. i'm cutting that one tonight <laughs> no but it's uh pride it's weird being isn't it? acceptance huh it goes back to when pot was legal now it's not weird for me to walk into a store reeking of marijuana no one says anything to me. I don't have to put cologne on because it's legal. You know, back in the day, people, you know, would look at you weird. You get all paranoid, you know, it's stra It's a strange, it's a strange new world to completely rip off Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were ripping off something then. <laughs> no, but it's true. Like I'm used to the old way where you fought the establishment and it goes back to what the, some of the greatest advice I ever got because they were grooming me. <laughs> when you're younger, you fight the establishment. And when you're older, you are the establishment. Well, that's true. And it's true. You know, to a certain extent, but we are the establishment. Yeah, you know, there's, I'm, there's <laughs> that old expression um, that I always just detested. Um, how did it go exactly? If, um, if, you're, if you're not a liberal when you're 20, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative when you're 40, you have no brain. Um, I've heard that. I always, I always added to it. Um, and if you're not a liberal again by the time you're 50, then you have no soul. <laughs> well, back then, um, it's way different than it is now. They're long gone are the days of the Michael P. Keaton where you kind of sit up and we're just like, I'm a Republican because I'm against everybody in my family. And yeah, I'm, I'm quoting Michael J. Fox, the old Michael J. Fox show. Those days, those days are gone. The Republican Party in America stands for um, repressing people, suppressing votes of people of color, kicking out anyone who doesn't, uh, who wasn't born in America. And you know, because that's actually um, a subject that's really close to heart to me. Like it, this whole us versus them thing really bothers me with immigration in America. Um. There are a lot of people that come here and work really hard, and they are our infrastructure. They quite literally are our infrastructure. And if they disappeared, our country would stop working. And I don't think people realize that. I, I, I've okay. spent, now I, I used to go to breakfast like every day um, to, to a, a restaurant. I had two different those Greek-style family restaurants and because they always had just great breakfasts. And the one thing every one of them had in common was uh, the busser. The busser was always this Hispanic male, somewhere between 18 and 30. And he, and he would come out and, you know, clear the dishes and wipe the tables down and stuff like that. And some of them, you could see that they did it with such pride. And they worked their asses that they would take this this gray tray thing filled with dishes that are mounded up and you can see that they're just sweating their ass 
to hold on to this thing. It's so heavy with those thick ceramic plates. And and they're just they're working like dogs for fucking minimum wage. Oh yeah. And, and it's like it's like how can you how can you talk badly about somebody who makes that much they effort? They don't even get tips, do they? It's like no. Let's see. And, it's, and they not only make it ever they're they're serving your ass. And, and, and they, they here, that. here, at least here where I live, the division has um. The us versus them has become the gap has become so large that the people on top do not even realize how hard these people work just to get us our food, just to uh, make sure our lights are on. Literally, the infrastructure of this country, and I, I think that's something that we don't highlight enough of the people who do work these jobs that we don't want to. There are people who go in our who go in our rendering plants and climb in giant septic tanks of shit to clean them so that we can have clean water and we can have working rendering plants in every major city and, yeah. you know, yeah. everywhere, you know, and we, we forget about these people. And usually it's someone who's not from here, you know. I, ha I, I have a soft spot for that because um, here in California, um, Hispanic people get a bad rap. And someone as someone who's half Mexican, like Donald Trump did no did no one any favors whatsoever. He trashed Hispanic people for no reason. He trashed the country basically. basically. Well, that he he jumped on a hot button. Because in America we used to take care of immigrants as long as they looked like us. As long as they looked cishet white, you know. But this, you know, I, I don't want to go off too hard. But the second they, that the immigrants were brown, all of a sudden it's it's oh they can't be in our country, they can't be here, and that bothers me because, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a brown person uh, crossing the border, at least on my mom's side, you know. So it bothers me when people trash. Like I said, like we are the infrastructure of this country, and at least here in Southern California. Most people that own a business look like me anyways. <laughs> so times have changed in that sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying all, but most. <laughs> but that's why I try not to gripe too hard because my socioeconomic status, status is different than somebody else's. So I can't speak necessarily on how other people live, you know? So, so we got a topic so change a topic first. Change. Oh, echo. Oh, echo. Oh, do I need my headphones? Maybe. Maybe. All right, let me grab them. One, two, three. I'll, I'll mute him and see if that's Will. Yeah, it was Will that was echoing. Yay. <laughs> oh, that damn Will. <laughs> He's always echoing. It's no good. But I need him back because this was for his benefit, so... <laughs> Let's unmute him. All right, that's bad. I knew it was me. I knew it was me. Yeah, and I wouldn't be able to get along. With it. Why did it suddenly start doing that when that's it wasn't weird. doing it along? My computer, it, it always does it. I have like a certain time frame, and then it starts giving me um, feedback and echo. I just like that not wearing headphones. Yeah. I feel less constricted. Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder if StreamYards has a problem with their um, page outs. One of the things Unix does is it moves shit around, memory around, um, to keep things flowing. If it, and if it doesn't do it, hey, correctly, uh, hand me that phone and go grab another one. Backed up and and it starts doing weird shit. Thank you. Yeah, it might. And also, let's be like like today. I just am now where I have functioning, um, like one hundred percent functioning Wi-Fi. My computer utterly and completely just stuttered, took a crap, gave me the stone cold salute, and died on me earlier. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm going to bring up the topic that um, like Wanderer left us with, which was Stargate and the new show that they're making. And I just want to hear Will Squee because what? Amanda Tapping is coming back and reprising her role for it. Okay, so you're spoiling <laughs> me. What show? They're, they're bringing back um, Stargate. Yeah, uh, and the new series what? will tie together SG-1 and Atlantis, uh, which means we will probably have Rodney appear ah! as well, and we're going to have Amanda Tapping in it as a regular. Oh, gosh. All right, so 
Hold on, hold on. Let me get on my high horse. Let me get it on. Let me ride in. Uh, let me let me get my soapbox in my high horse. Okay. So you said Amanda tapping. So I'm gonna put away my pitchforks and my riot gear for now. Here's my beef. Here's my beef. And I'm gonna get super geeky. So just stay with me. Okay. The sh- the show ended with Eli walking around on the Destiny, putting people on um, in pods, saving them because they were going to go look for the message on the Destiny. Yes. So, all I'm saying as a super geek, I will not be satisfied if they do not tie in the show and they do not use Atlantis to go um, find Destiny. And there's this guy named Jason Momoa who just happened to get really famous after Atlantis. <laughs> No one cared that he was on soap operas in, uh, in Atlantis. And then he took his shirt off and everybody cared all of a sudden. So they need to bring that guy back too. And I and then I'll squee like a like a little kid. I I'm excited. I I you know I would so I, love to see him back. I, I just Thank you. Him. Me well, too. That, Me too. That I, would I be guess I'll awesome. probably bring in some guests. I mean given that they want to tie Atlantis and SG1 together with what they're doing here. I would hazard a guess that he will guess at some point, but I doubt he wouldn't be a regular because he's too busy with all these other shits. And I like SGU. I liked it. A well, lot maybe, of people. Maybe we'll see them. Maybe we'll get a closure to the story so, as part of what's happening with this. I'm sorry. Can... I'm sorry. I need closure. You need closure. Stargate, you, you scarred me. <laughs> why are they bringing Amanda Tapping back? How, how are they... <clears throat> because. Explain that. She would be the highest ranking because Richard Dean Anderson doesn't look like a general. He looks actually um, Don S. Davis was a bigger guy. MacGyver doesn't look like MacGyver anymore. No, and I don't think he's not into it anymore. And, and they were, and, and he was almost at the point of retiring when they did uh, Galaxy, so they could say he's retiring now. And that would make that so Amanda Tapping would come back as a as a general more than likely. Absolutely, absolutely, so because she, she was there for, as a like regular she would be the command of the whole Stargate Center. Then. She would have yeah, to be she because be she the was there from the beginning. Yeah, yeah and on his, I mean, she's put on twenty years. She's got to look. Yeah, and older. she still looks awesome. <laughs> Hey, she's she's like fine wine. Don't judge a man in tapping. So what you probably Women. find it, what you probably find is Rodney will appear occasionally in and he's head of every bit of research to do with um yeah. with, with Stargate with the Stargate and everything because that that would be Rodney. And she's a general and now she's in charge of stuff and because she's a scientist a general who's in charge of stuff, Rodney gets what he wants. <laughs> There's lots of people who can be in their fifties and sixties and be barges like my girlfriend. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I still like your smile, Jenny. Absolutely, and I'm so saying I, my happy. whole my 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 whole point is like I just hope they don't cock it up. But but I'm not like like the modern day nerd who riots over a new Doctor Who or gets mad because there's only one man on the on the bridge of Discovery. Like if it's if it's you know I didn't even notice it until three weeks ago. I thought about it, and Jen was like. Oh really? Yeah, there I didn't, only I didn't one know you the role. I, I, I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right." But fucking hell, no, I didn't during, notice it. <laughs> during the the woke during our uh, woke sewing circle, I thought about it, and you know what? I loved the show so much. It wasn't. I didn't even notice, and no, I don't what's care. Even better is most of the main char- uh, most of the main characters are either female or or, or LGBT. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I, I, lo- I love the show. So if it's good, you know. So I, I'm all for it. So, I, so now I'm I understand tired. why all those woke sci that that not woke all, all those weird weird I, ass more conservative sci fi lovers are all like, Oh no, it's a shit show. Yeah, it's a shit show because you don't like having representation on your sci fi. Exactly. You're the same exactly. assholes who complained about the doctor becoming female. I'm having a hard time remembering who the woman was that played the commander of Atlantis. Um Um, Doctor Weir. Doctor Weir, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who was playing that role? I, Oh, Tori, um, no, um, Tori no. Spelling is that train rag who, <laughs> she is a billionaire. Do you know if I was her, I would literally be on a beach not talking to anyone. And she's all up on, on weird shows, causing Higginson, drama. Sorry, like, Higginson, Tori yes. Higginson, sorry. I don't know why spelling came into my head. So, 
Well, I um, always thought she, she was, was pretty cool. <laughs> What's that, Kitty? Sorry. They're, um, no, 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 it's fine. Um, so there's this, like, YouTube show that they're, like, you know, kind of conservative and, like, anti-wokeness and, um... I forget what they're called, like, geeks and, and gamers or something like that. But, like, one of the guys was off on a tiff uh, complaining about Loki um, oh. and saying, like, oh, we only watched, we only watched the first episode because, you know, of something. He, he, he claimed that he only watched the first episode. He could tell it was going to be bad. But then he also claimed it was because of the director's comments on Twitter that came out after the third episode where it was like, hey, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, get in here that Loki is bi, because as a bi person myself, it's important to have that representation that Loki is uh, bi in the canon that. now. But Loki, and I think it's great. Uh, uh, historically, Loki is fa fairly representative as bi, but also as being non-gender specific <laughs> as well, so... Well, and... Loki is I've watched fine. the show, and actually, <laughs> what's really cool is, um, well, actually, technically, Loki is omnisexual, because at yeah. one point, he turned himself into a horse to seduce another horse, and then gave birth to Sletnir, which oh, Loki geez. gave birth to um, Loki gave birth, yeah. his no. son Sletnir. Lo Lo um, Loki is the original um, yeah. non-binary. No, Loki... He's <laughs> <laughs> too. <laughs> but actually, in the show... I lost Carol. In, in Disney show... They actually show a file on Loki, and if you look at the file on there under gender, it says fluid. Like oh, yeah. that's actually in the show um, on a skateboard. But when it comes down to it, they're like, "Oh, well, you know, it's wokeness," and they did a bait and switch because, um, like, there is a, a feminine like Loki that you know that the, they're going after and it's like oh well they they promised us you know tom hiddleston and now they're bait and switching with no. them loki and it's tell, like tell, tell me about he's this. still in the show okay so what happens with a lot of the comic book people is that they vicariously live through these people so when the character gets out of the realm they're ready to riot so when anything gets changed it's because look at all the people when the doctor um, became a woman, people yeah. lost their shit. There was videos of people burning their DVDs and people throwing their stuff against the wall because they pretend to be these people. Get over yourself. It's my advice, you know. Go outside. If you want to be like Loki, go stare at nature. <laughs> go sit next to a lake. Explain, explain this to me about Loki. Is and then build a dam. In the, in, the, in the first film he was in, um, where Hulk beat the shit out of him, <laughs> which was so much fun to watch. I <laughs> was, was he was a bad he was a bad guy. Is he a good guy now? Yeah, he's more of an anti-hero. So yeah. basically. In the MCU, in the movies, Loki has a very long arc, and he actually goes through quite a lot, and he mm -hmm. becomes actually not a bad guy, like, towards the end um, of the MCU's he's almost, main he's arc. Only, like, he's he's almost Infinity a hero by the like end. I'm not going to yeah. spoil it. I mean, he does try to take yeah, out he, Thanos. Yeah, but he basically, he gets a redemption arc. Yeah, he, he does try, but so he gets a redemption arc. Now, in the show... It actually, because of some timey wimey shit, as the doctor would say, um, the in Infinity War they have to kind of go back in time in the movies to kind of stop Thanos. And um, when they do that, like you see that Loki gets a chance to escape. So it's basically right after he got the shit kicked out of him by the Hulk. That Loki is the one at the start of the Loki show on Disney, so he hasn't had the character development yet. So Except he's watched like all his own character reset, development. But then he gets to see okay. a video of himself, yeah. watching his character development, so he's kind of like not quite as good as he was, you know, in the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as far as like the films go. But he got to see things like his mother dying because of his own actions. And that fucking mm. hit him hard. Mm. Because his mother was the one person he cared about the most. And see, <laughs> um, in, uh, in one of the Thor movies, basically, Loki sends the Frost Giants up the stairs and to the left. He's like, yeah, you might want to head up the stairs and to the left. Thinking he's sending them 
to Thor because fuck Thor. But instead, he ends up sending them to where his mother was, and she basically gets killed by those frost giants. And, like, he sees that on a video projector in, like, the time agency, because it's basically time cops come after him, and it's very, like, fucking, like, 1984. There's a lot of 1984 imagery in it, and, like, I don't trust the time agents. It's a, they oh, scare the shit not. out of no, me. It's, They're it's, far too authoritarian, stormtrooper 1984, big brother shit. I don't trust them. Never ever let fascists be in charge of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem there's, is there's that power. Definitely <laughs> ulter- ulterior motives by the aliens that created the um, the time agents, and the time agents don't even I know think, where they're from uh, originally. Uh, They've all had their mem- memories wiped and shit. Yeah. yeah, but even in Star Trek, you could say the time agents are fascist. You could say the Federation is fascist. Oh, the Federation. Just depends. <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow. No, 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 no. No, this this is different, though. This is literally, they have the sacred timeline because they wanted to stamp out the multiverse. And any time something happens that would, you know, branch off to a multiverse, like a multiverse is considered like the natural state of the universe. And these people are trying to force that to not be its natural state. So mm. they not only go and hunt down these, you know, um, people that like they're they're um, uh, fuck. Variants. I can't think of the word that they use for Variant. them. Um, variants. Thank you. Yeah. They go to hunt down these variants, but some of them they actually brainwash and turn into stormtrooper cops. Yeah. Mm. Like and it's. It, and, like, I don't know how they do it, because they haven't shown it in the show or anything like that. But, but uh, we all know it's so, happening, like, but, it, it, it's just, yeah. It's, it's weird, and there's a lot going, yeah, it's obvious that it's happening, you know? Um, and um, another thing, like, I, I'm i trying to remember, it was, like, a K name. There, there was a villain in the, M, in the Marvel Universe that um, they basically um, were all about, like, rearranging time the way they wanted it. And the the chick who's in charge of the time agent, she, she speaks for, like, the three timekeepers. Um, her name is the same as the name of the girlfriend of that one person from the Marvel comics. So, like, that's kind of a nod, and that makes me sus. Plus, I don't think it was three timekeepers. I think it's just one dude that created the lore of, you know, because... The universe loves trinities and threes, so they created the lore that these three magnanimous, you know, entities decide, the timekeepers decided to fix the universe when really it's somebody else doing some meddling. Yeah. Probably another Loki. That's my (laughs) thing. Yes, Jenny. I wouldn't be surprised if it's an entire other Loki. The Council of Ricks. Yes, the Council of Loki's like the Council of Ricks. I I like the movies, but I don't study the timeline and, and the whole arc of the stories and all this stuff is on, on TV there's a show Legends of Tomorrow is that DC or MCU? Legends of Tomorrow is uh, that... it's DC okay I actually like that show it's on Netflix too I actually uh, I like that show yeah they also have a time agency as well that keeps track of the timeline See, that's how I know time travel is not real, because I would have already told myself by now. <laughs> yeah. I, I Legends of Tomorrow much because they they get so much into um, ghosts and goblins and hell and spirits and stuff. But comic yeah. books always do that. I mean, look at Marvel. Look- I mean, the the whole the whole um, Doctor Strange, and then you've got uh, Scarlet Witch and the oh, uh, what's it the What's the name of the stupid the book she's now got? I can't remember what it's called. Then it's Constantine. Uh, and oh, then the, the, well, the Constantine's dre- DC, uh, the but yes. Hold, or, or Dreadhold. Yeah. But, oh, the dread, um, yeah. No, I'm saying, dread. like, you're just saying in comics in general, like... Yeah, it, it's all full of mystical. Yeah, but uh, I think it's the Dreadhold. I mean, Shazam is purely a mystical I character. I love Constantine. I was just about to go off about Constantine. Like, Constantine. so... I'm a hard like I, I I'm a hardcore atheist. I honestly say I don't believe in anything because it's kind of it's kind of where I toe the line. But I love uh, movies like Constantine, um, 
I saw a list where they were like, oh, these are religious sci-fi movies. Or like like they said Hacksaw Ridge was a religious movie. I had no idea Hacksaw Ridge was a religious movie. I loved it. You know, I could care less if it was a religious movie or not. Like, you know, you can get goosebumps without believing in uh, in the spaghetti monster. <laughs> Speaking of Goosebumps, know. one of my favorite shows, like, I mean, I remember Goosebumps airing, like, back in, like, yep. the late 90s, but my favorite show to watch after school was Are You Afraid of the Dark? I fucking wanted to be part of the Midnight Society. I wanted to start my own Midnight Society, fucking sitting around a campfire, tossing non-dairy, uh, powdered, you know, non-dairy creamer into the fire to make go whoosh. So uh, I, I'm sure there'd stories. be lots of teenage boys in history who sat, uh, sat around a campfire tossing creamer into it. <laughs> Sorry, kitty. <kidding>. So <laughs> I, I actually made a um, Midnight Society patch. I'm going to have to dig it out now with the campfire and everything. And when I used to wear it, I could tell the person's age because they'd be like, hey, Midnight Society. I'd be like, hey, you're around my age. <laughs> I could always tell someone's age by that. Yeah, How's it going, Matt? i heard of that. Uh, apparently, you're Richard Carrier's new best friend, Kitty. So, according to Donut Head. <laughs> oh, hey, I... Donut Head. <laughs> apparently. Who's <laughs> character when I stop? I mean, I did get to chat with him he, he the other awesome. day. The chat, too. He, he was lovely. He is. Um, and I got to chat with him a little bit more on uh, Facebook Messenger afterwards because I had started working on the little practice quilt. And, um, you know, I, I said it was a, a fun time chatting and I showed him like the, the progress that I had made because he was like, you know, interested. And I was like, yeah. Hi, Matt. But he's really <laughs> nice. I like him. Hello. How are you? How's it going? Just sitting down to lunch in my office, but we're not going to be doing too much else other than that at the moment because we're back into lockdown. Yay. I know. <laughs> But oh well, we got the Delta variant moving around, so do we, it's about do time we have the, all the anti-vaxxers to thank for this? <laughs> well, we just don't have enough vaccines to give to people in Australia, so only five percent of our population's vaccinated, mainly because we can't, or we don't have enough. I was lucky because my dad's a doctor; I managed to get it early because yeah. household contacts. But yeah, Australia is very behind on the vaccine. We We're good with our contact tracing, and we've been fairly good at dealing with the actual spread of COVID, we just, yeah, have no one that's vaccinated, so we all have yeah, to so live I'm with that, unfortunately. At the moment, so. uh, are you waiting for, like, Pfizer, or? Oh, I don't care. I, but I'm... Just I'm... Whenever. Well, I didn't know it was, I, I uh, it was like that, though. I don't think the other one to anyone under 50, though. I think you have to wait for Pfizer. Yeah, now they've made it optional for anyone under 60. So, But, yeah, we, we just don't have enough vaccines in this country to do vaccinations, unfortunately. So, yeah, unless you're somehow connected with a medical or frontline worker, you, you can't get it. And, and that is entirely the fault of our federal government because they fucked this up. Wow. They are begging people to take the vaccine here. Yeah. They're, they're I mean, this close to coming to our, our front door. Our, our government said... Oh, we can make do with just one source of the vaccine, and then when it didn't work out, we fucked up because now we don't have any, and it's hard to get. Yeah, I know, but I from up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see it, Eddie. But from what I heard of uh, what happened between the medical industry here and the the actual kind of um, ministers for the federal government who are in charge of doing this. They just pretty much pulled the numbers out of thin air and said, we'll have everyone done by this time. And it was more of a number to gain popular support than one that was backed up by any shred of possible... Um, Which doesn't uh, sound like the word a politician being able to carry at it out? all. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah I, I know. At, at least we we haven't got... Yeah, we have a government... We'll, have, we'll generally put lockdowns into place when we well, need no, them. I, I, uh, I'd like to say most of our states, not, not all, but the majority of our states are actually doing a reasonably good job of dealing with it. Our federal government yeah. is, is pretending that it's responsible for how well the states have done things. Yeah, most but, of it is on the states, but yes. even our worst states, like New South Wales is yeah. where I am, is, is terrible at shutting down compared to the other states, and we're still do, doing better than most countries are. 
in yeah. terms of responses to the virus. So as much as we can complain, it's a, I guess, a relative complaint. Our problem is that the current variant going around is a really infectious, well, the high, most infectious we've had so far. So we have to deal with it that way. But yeah, so hopefully that, that can go along. Although I can see that uh, YouTube's already got the little wi the um, link underneath your it video has. saying COVID because uh, we're talking we about it. Before we live, that came up. I, I mentioned it. I said, oh, wow. So because I put COVID in the title, there's a link to find factual information about COVID, <laughs> which I don't yeah, think is a bad doing thing. That. I don't think that's a bad thing, to be honest. But I, I just thought it was funny because the video hadn't even gone live and they picked it up. It was like, yeah. <laughs> My my completely uneducated um, belief is that the United States is going to go into another period of lockdown because of the anti-vaxxers with with the variant now being so so calm. Well, it's in every state. It's in every state now. Yeah. How are the number of cases in America going at the moment? I haven't seen it for a little while. Oh, it, it, it's been dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. They reached some point... Um, uh, where there was fewer uh, diagnoses of, of COVID than some early date in the beginning of it, and, and something they thought, you know, it was in the, in the hundreds nationwide of, of wow. people diagnosed. Um, that's but, actually, that, that's uh, that's pretty good. And yeah. I guess, yeah, that's that just shows how powerful the, the vaccines can be, which is why science always wins. Well, as long as just, once it's glad, allowed to win. I'm just glad that our country got an administration that believed in science at the right time. Or I think we'd get, we have well, a, a million dead by now. I, if that asshole had won, won again. I, I have the feeling that um, if that asshole had never been there, you would have been a lot better off and it'll be a lot more oh, people. Yeah. But yes, I know. We'll take the victories that we can get. Oh, yeah, but definitely. yes. I'm always a big, well, I mean, obviously I'm going to be a big believer in science because, you know, it's what I do, but I think that's why we need to keep, you know, keep the science institutions going because they're the ones that will last. <laughs> I just saw that container. If you, uh, Godless Sewing's giant uh, cheese ball <laughs> container. Cheesy pops. Yeah. Is that like... The only time I've ever seen that is in like cartoons because you got, it's not easy to find here. No, um, these are cheese was, balls because we're yeah, in the season. Oh, they actually come <laughs> was, in that. I thought you bought them in bags and filled the thing up. <laughs> no, these are cheese balls. These are. Um, I went. To, I don't go to Walmart. I go. To, I don't go to Walmart that much. They're, I really try not, but I had to, and so every time I go to Walmart, I, I buy one of these because I'm. I uh, eat like an emancipated thirteen-year-old. Or the only time I've seen that in cartoons is when people have the munchies. I want, I, to, go, I want to go to Sam's Club and get that, that jar that's as big as that, except it's filled with nourishing on cherries. Like I said, I went I went um, cherry picking. I got like 10 pounds of cherries. That'll kill you real quick. You'll never want a cherry again. <laughs> We're all about excess here. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Oh, almost, almost, Doc. There was something I wanted to uh, check with you to see if you approve. Um, a, a, it's a meme I want to I want to put together, and it goes: um, Science is the science of using science to disprove science. Yep, I approve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yep, it does kind of highlight what it's all about. <laughs> Okay, just I just wanted to check with an authority. <laughs> yes, because I'm I, I'm an absolute authority in science. <laughs> yes. I don't even have a PhD. I'm not even a doctor yet. And... <laughs> well, you're almost, you're almost. <laughs> almost. Well, like another two years, <laughs> hopefully, if it all, all goes well. Uh, if it doesn't go well, then I'll just permanently or be almost a doctor. <laughs> well, that would be. All right. we, you'll, get like... there. you'll get there. Uh, you'll no, get there. No, you'll get there. I know. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Yeah, I've been running temperature stability checks today. I've got this little ther um, thermo uh, thermistor and Peltier oh, nice. element, which what it is is if you run a current through it, it makes one side cold and one side hot. Peltier. And yeah. so I'm just, yeah, it, it, it's a really cool effect. Yeah. 
Yeah, but, uh, well, that, that's how they make the little portable hey, I, oh, fridges oh, that you oh, put in cars oh. and that. You, have a, God, you're, you you're use the, a pill to your effect, and you you make the one side go cold, and then on the other side you have a big heat sink and fan to cool off the other side so you can keep it cool on the inside. That's exactly so, what I've got, although mine's not that big um, down there, the, the one we've got, but it's... Um, Bad but we don't need. There. <laughs> Hence, yeah, I know. I kind of realized that halfway through, but it was just like, I can't stop mid sentence. <laughs> I don't worry. I'm only talking about the Peltier element. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you do with, with the Peltier with, with the Peltiers. I have this tool I would love for you to see. Um, in, in the automotive business, when you're testing sensors and stuff, they're, they're primarily temperature sensors. Yeah. And so you need to know what they're doing in a cold state and in a warm state. Um, so I have this tool that you plug into compressed air and, on, and it's basically just a, a, an air connection and a pipe. And out of one side of the pipe is, is cold air around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And out of the other end is warm air at about 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And there are no moving parts. How does that work? Uh, I would have to have a, have a closer look at it. I'm, I'm trying to think now. Uh, I mean, you don't... If it, Is there any power connected? Sorry. I'd, nope. Nope, just just compressed air at a hundred, about one hundred and twenty pounds per square inch. Okay, so, but w so what's the hot side again? It's around. I get where the cools comes it's from. It's around one hundred and twenty to one hundred thirty degrees. It'll burn I'm your. Assuming, assuming that's Fahrenheit. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm trying to think of where the hot air comes from. With the compressed gas, it's quite easy to get where the cold air comes from because when you um when a gas is kind of let go to expand really quickly it cools down because that energy has to go somewhere and, and if you and when it and when it expands what does it do it gets warm isn't it no, i thought it was no when it heats up when you compress it'll cool it'll cool down when you when you let it expand hi brian <laughs> hey how hey, brain bug. How's it, it going? As I understand it now, I can't open the tool. How's if it I going? The tool, I, I'm afraid that I would destroy it. But as I understand it, inside there is a... Uh, I, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. It, it's a series... Oh, I'll try and start over here. There's a series of steps that the air tumbles down and the vertice, vertice, vort, vortices that occur within the corner of each step are the key to making it do its hot thing or its cold thing. Okay, and now, that, I, I can get the cool thing. I'm trying to think of the hot thing, but fluid dynamics is, is not something I have anything too much you create, in. I mean, anything that you create something cold with or, or hot and cold thing is a, is a heat pipe issue. It, to, to have created something uh, in this sort of situation, you, if you're creating a cooling side, you have to create a heat pipe to shift the heat somewhere else. Well, it's yeah. my favorite tool. I hardly ever use it, but it absolutely is is the perfect mind fuck for people who think they're really smart. Now, you know, you can make um, you can make say, how does well, how does this do this? <laughs> you, you can, like, well, I mean, okay. anything that expands and contracts, or any way that you create things that expand and contracts, like yeah. like in gases, you'll get a you'll get a hot cold effect depending on whether you're expanding yeah. or contracting well, it. Like gas. air conditioning. Yeah, like air conditioning. You did you know you can do the same thing with solids? So. You can use rubber as your medium to expand and contract, and you can get you can create hot and cold uh, hot and cold heat pipe through rubber. So uh, there are there are people who've made um, rubber band based cooling systems, which is quite kind of fascinating because it's still just mm -hmm. expansion and contraction. So you, I mean, it's not as good a medium. Good up. It's not as good a medium. <laughs> uh, Matt knew what I meant. <laughs> As um, a gas would be, but you can do it. Certainly, do it through rubber and um, anything else that you can expand and, and contract. So. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm also trying to have my lunch in the background. Sorry, oh, I'm right, a bit Matt. quiet every now and then. But, but yeah, you could anytime you get that that expansion compression. 
particularly like anything like when people in physics or engineering say fluids they're not talking about something that's just a liquid it's anything that flows basically so liquid solid gas and generally often they'll make the assumptions that they're not compressible but <laughs> yeah it's once you get into fluid. it that's... Every, everything's compressible it's just how what its breaking point for compression or its uh, limit to compression is <laughs> what's that what's Black that brian holes. i said is sound a fluid well, sound is a propagation through a fluid, or, or a um, or anything that can expand and contract. So even a solid can um, have waves move through it. So yes, yeah, so that's why sound travels through water and through metal much better than it does through air. Yeah. yeah. So so sound's not a fluid, but it's something that can travel travel within a medium. Um, effectively, how, how light is the same, except light has this dual dual property of being both a particle and a wave but that's that's probably more to do with how we explain white uh light than it is an actual nature of light because uh, fully understanding how electromagnetic wave works is is just something that well, we, we've got a reasonably good idea through quantum mechanics but it's still up for debate whether or not there's uh exactly how it works where we have the Copenhagen interpretation of how quantum mechanics works, which gives us the quantum packets and light is a duality um, of, of a particle and a wave. But there's other interpretations to quantum mechanics that mean hey, that... Hey, you, you two smart science, like science guys. Um, <laughs> Sorry. What do you think, what, what do you, how do you think sound would do passing through a non-Newtonian fluid? You know, I'm thinking class, the, that classic corn starch and water mix. Yeah. Well, well, then you would have um, non-linear. So, in other words, things don't change quite in the way you expect them to when you have that. So, like, corn flour is a good Newtonian fluid. If they were very low frequency, frequency sound waves, the amplitude was quite low, then they'd pass through as you would expect. But as soon as you hit them really hard with a giant sound wave, it'd actually travel much further than you would expect. But it depends on which way around. The like, speed would be different too. So you'd also get um, a change in p either pitch or frequency depending on 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 how the non-Newtonian fluid reacted. So, I mean, you get that where you get sound waves moving I was, through different mediums anyway. I was anyway, thinking, but... again, from my uneducated viewpoint, um, <laughs> that, um, that the sound would enter the fluid and begin to move through it, but would create some sort of cascading effect that would then put up a barrier to the sound for going all the way through it. Uh, only so, doorknob, hold on. Doorknob head wants to know, is glass a fluid? Oh. It's, a, it's always a good one to answer that one, because it... Uh, that's a depends. Answer. I've made, I've made, um, I've made a pipe. I took a class in Arizona at ASU of, of uh, glass blowing, and you have to liquefy glass to, you know, you have to I, liquefy the, the, reason, all those. the reason for this discussion comes from not a doctor. Yeah, yeah, because my no, because my science was so yeah, bad. He's like, oh, I can't hear this. No. <laughs> uh, no, the point, the, the point is that the reason why people think this is is because you've got old glass that um, has existed for a long time in like old churches and old buildings, and it's thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. So the the point with there is that <clears throat> sorry. Um, the, the thought from that is that, well, the, it must have been perfectly flat to start off with and has run down and, no. and collected at the base. That's not necessarily true. There are some types of glass that, depending on their impurities, are a little less solid than you would expect glass to be. And they technically could do that. But the main reason why glass was thicker at the bottom than at the top in the past was just the way they manufactured it. And what they do yeah, is when they inserted them, they put the thicker bits at the bottom because they were the stronger bits and they had to support the most weight of the glass. So it was a building choice to do with the way that the glass was originally made. So originally the glass was thicker at the bottom than the top anyway. In, in, in those days, what they would do to make a glass plate is that they would they would basically blow out a cylinder mm -hmm. and split the cylinder and, and flatten it out. And just by the nature of that process, it's not going to be even at all. And so that's why old old glass is always wavy, and why they why they actually harvest old glass yeah. from uh, from building from buildings and stuff because there's people who want to restore an old house and they oh. want 
that original old style glass in it. So as a, as a real life picker of that and barn doors, my neighbor across the street has an old barn door that um, leads to their pool. And they paid an outrageous amount of money for that, you know, I'll bet. I'll bet an you. outrageous amount. <laughs> and if you find any, if you find any um, glass that's like from, I'll say a built in curio or something from a house and it's beveled, snatch it. Don't oh, call me. I know people. Call me. <laughs> Double glass is so valuable. Oh, yeah. I bought a piece of tempered glass because I had to replace a shelf in one of our display cabinets, and it cost me... Uh, it, was, it was about $20 more than buying a normal sheet, but I think it was worth it because you want the extra sh strength. Of there the are some... Kitty. <laughs> there are some... Uh, I think they're, 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 it's a Mennonite group up uh, north of here that, that has their own... Uh, where they make they make like window glass, but they make it like the old old fashioned way and, and sell them that way, like what she was talking about, where they lay it all out and do it by hand. Uh, we went through there on a tour when we were kids. It was really cool. I, I respect that. As I, someone I who like loves stitching and and things that take patience, I do woodwork. Like I love anything that that's done by hand that takes patience. Oh, I hand carve wood. I love that. I I used to hand carve guitars a lot but i oh awesome my hands have kind of gone out i, I really can't play guitar too much anymore either because I, I it hurts after about an hour or so and I'm, I'm like can't use that hand for a week after i play for an hour it kind of sucks so i just so uh, with a lot of my woodwork like i um did chiseling for a long time i um i use a dremel i'm not scared to admit it or like mm -hmm. i made a um an ancient omec hand um it's actually i just put it in my backyard um, I used a yeah, chainsaw to form. I remember that. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab really? my one of the guitars I made. I'll be right back. Awesome, awesome. I um I'm obsessed with carving. That was something I used to do pre. Um, now you can't just walk out on. Well, see on my property, like there's all these laws now where you just can't walk out and chainsaw stuff because of fires. Like you can, but you have to have purpose. California is nothing but a pile of paperwork. <laughs> They recently removed, uh, well, relatively recently removed rules in Australia to make it that you could do that if it was anywhere within a certain area of your property because of... Oh, that's, oh, that's, oh, that's just cool. beautiful. That's gorgeous. Oh, that's see, that's what I'm saying. That is amazing. Uh, I could, I was never great at woodwork. You guys <laughs> easily top me. I was always, my preferred kind of hand uh, done methods would be, would be drawing. I like drawing. I got... One video on my channel, it's like that. But I just, there was like, I got bored in so many lecture theaters and I just start like either cartoons or sketches. I did a, a giant sailing vessel in stats in first year. I've still got that one in my room. But I do others. I've got like mice. I've got battle f fields that I've drawn. I used to, yeah. And so I, I had an exam once where we were allowed to take in an a, A4 sheet of notes, double sided, but it was for programming, and to get to the exam, you had to be pretty proficient, and it was similar yeah. to other programs. I did it's like a first-year course in fifth year that I did. It was very easy. I didn't need a cheat sheet because I'd had just the practice of doing it before. So instead, I just drew cartoons out of the old Disney movie, Atlantis. It had these ridiculous faces on it. I and love that movie. It is <laughs> awesome. It is so underrated. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, that one. And I had I had Milo on the front and I had um, Mole on the back. Oh, that's awesome! And I had the invigilators. Every one of them stopped at the desk to point pointed out to the others. <laughs> like a few of them were like picking it up off the desk. I had like two lines of writing on it, uh, and then I, and I'd somehow got my hands because through physics on like one of the official like certificate pages that the uni had. So I, I just put on, this is to certify you can do this. And that's like the scene towards the end when he's like, come on, Milo, you can do this just before he flies his thing off into the balloon, which won't make any sense to those who haven't seen I it. I love that movie. <laughs> okay, so when I played World of Warcraft, I actually named my rogue Kida. Well, Kidagakash, but, you know. Um, so I actually named one of my World of Warcraft characters after... Prince Akita from uh, that movie. Oh, I, I, I love, yeah. I love that movie. My uh, my last exam in um, computer science was in C, 
and um, we had a three hour exam where uh, there was a whole heap of coding to do with um, sorts and stuff like that and I can't remember, it was too long ago now but um, I walked out the exam after an hour and met the lecturer outside and they go, have you given up? and I go, no I've finished and they go, there's no way you finished it took me the full three hours to do that and they go, well I finished well you're going to get a dreadful mark I got top mark in the class <laughs> It just, it just was not a hard exam. I was like, why do you think this is hard? It wasn't hard at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was so annoyed in that course. I got an 84 <laughs> for mine. And they took a mark off me and my friend because we had a nine lines of lines of code in one of our homework assignments that was the same. So they're like, no, nah, we're taking a mark off you. Yeah, and we was... both got 84. But that doesn't make any sense because you, you learn a particular way to do things when you do these classes. And they have a particular way they want you to do things. So you're going to have chunks of code that look the same because we've all learnt how to do it that particular way. That makes no sense. No, it wasn't good enough for them because they had a lot of people who didn't do it very efficiently. They had a lot of unnecessary code. Whereas my friend and I had chatted and we had like a very efficient method. But they're like, no, it's similar. I'm like, it's nine lines. It's like like... We, we had to, oh, the old days of 8-bit um, microbees. Not the, not the BBC, the, the Australian micro computer. We had to write a program to calculate the first um, thousand primes. Which, I oh, mean, wow. on an 8-bit PC, that takes a while to get your first thousand primes. And I came up with an algorithm for doing it that last, that was like um, about oh, a couple of hours faster than everybody else's. <laughs> Like, I can't talk what? trash. I grew what up on an Apple IIe. I grew up on on an Apple IIe and, and Rita Rabbit. So I can't talk trash. I literally just... I'm showing my age, but... CDOS run. Those were the good the good old days. Oh, CDOS run. No, I, I, that's, I think we had Windows 95 on our first computer, though. But Windows 95 was, like, brand new. So... <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> Remember that was those like days, too. too. I can remember getting the internet, which I think would be most people here, but I can also... <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, this this still works. Cool. Not officially my first computer. This isn't the actual computer, but it was... Well, actually, it wasn't my first computer. The Commodore 64 was my second computer. My first computer was a programmable calculator, which was actually classed as a computer, one of those Casio... PB100s, uh, they didn't mm -hmm. do much, but I learned to program basic in them, and then I got the Commodore 64, and then I learned to program assembly, because you can't program basic on a Commodore 64. It just <laughs> <laughs> Casio didn't hang in in the computer game very long after that, did they? No, because in the, um, in the late 80s and the early 90s, they made a bunch of keyboard synthesizers and, um, like, headphones. And, you know, they went more in the accessories game after that. Yeah. Because I had a million uh, record players as a kid because you could still go to the store and buy records back then. I used to have a Casio keyboard that had a microphone that hooked into the side heck of yeah. it. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck I, yeah. I, that whole era was awesome. The the thought was is um, in the late eighties everybody was obsessed with keyboards and so they pushed it all the way into the nineties when people were everybody was playing guitars by then, right? You know? People were over it, but they, you know, says the guy who literally has a Yamaha sitting right here. Oh, because yeah. one day I will um, revive my synth pop career. I will I will make a comeback one day. You, you, you make a comeback. <laughs> I, I'm like, I play um, everything, but it's like, I'm I'm more into weird instruments. Like, I play the banjo. Me too. I'm obsessed with the banjo. And I feel like I have to keep it going because my pops was like, he taught me all these like old school hillbilly songs that like, he was 88. He Well, he died at, he, well, I'm sorry, he died at 80, but he um, grew up in a world that doesn't exist anymore. He grew up in, in the South and he learned like songs and, and knew like slave songs and just he spoke Gula, which was like a combination of all these African languages. And he taught me a lot of stuff. So it's like my duty to keep it going, <laughs> you know. Cool. So is it like a is it like a frailing style or uh... I have a six string and then I, I have a um, four string. OK, I got a five string. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome. I'd like to oh, see yeah. it sometime. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I lit. I had them both in here, but it's been so hot. I've been cleaning my house, so I finally yeah. cleaned out my closet. Let me. Um, this is this is actually closet. amazing. <laughs> Oh, my closet is laughable, actually. He's I have a walk-in closet. <laughs> it looks like it, he has a looks camera like in his closet, closet. but he it's can a mandolin. Add his closet to the stream. <laughs> I have a walk-in closet. I'm bougie. No. Judge me. I I went full Carol Baskin. He does when, when the I saw Tiger it. King, <laughs> when I when I saw Tiger King, I was like, you know, I'm one of those people. When I see things, I'm like, oh, I can do that. And I had the space, so I turned my closet into Carol Baskin's closet without all the tiger print. <laughs> it's more more denim and leather. <laughs> but it's really what's in there. But there's gonna be a little bit of tiger print, right? Just a smidge. Yeah, here yeah. and there. Here and there. I love For tiger you. print. I love animal prints. They, they they pretty much I used to have a whole bunch of animal print stuff and, and Tiger King kind of ruined that for me. <laughs> like, I I had this really weird split thing about the Tiger King because, like, he, okay, first off, I'm going to say this. Joe Exotic was a bitch, okay? I'm the resident uh, bi guy here. You know, I'm constantly going off, but the Tiger King made me laugh my ass off when he was like, when you watch porn, do you like it with the big ones? Or, like, I'm surprised that shit works. I'm surprised that shit worked on somebody, you know? But, like... I I didn't like how everyone ratted him out. I'm sure the Tiger King was was a dirty person. If you watch his um his shows on YouTube, he was an awful boss. Yeah. He was an awful boss, you know. But people ratted on him and he got 22 years in prison. But he did obsessively say he wanted to kill uh what's her face? Carol Basket. Well, <laughs> and in a <laughs> I didn't watch all of it. I just kind of parse through it because uh i don't know it was, it was trending everywhere but i i didn't watch it until one day my ex-wife called me and we we get along she called me and she's like bro this is so you <laughs> you need to watch the tiger King. <laughs> she was like this is you if we lived in oklahoma you a-hole <laughs> And I was like, "You're so right." So I like, like I know, like I um, see. I don't like my my family owns a property, so I know how it is to have people like not wanting to take things away from you, but people wanted to swindle you. Like everybody's always trying to sell me something. I recently got a gift basket. I'm gonna go get it in a minute to show you how much people kiss my butt because they want my um, my business. But but people did the Tiger King dirty. You know, they ratted on him. I, I don't know. I, I'm split on him. But he was a complete wreck of a human being. That's totally <laughs> not that far off from just typical Oklahoma, though. Some of my, some of the, my, my company's uh, offices are in Oklahoma, so we go down there for business and stuff. Some of them mm -hmm. fly down there. But uh, driving down, the, uh, down through there, there's private zoos and uh, menageries and stuff all up because they're – the way that they allow on uh, Native American land to, you can pretty much get away with that on those properties. Uh, That's crazy. So lots of people with, with exotic animals. I am anti, see, here's my problem though. Like when um, my son was younger, we, well, every year we have this tradition where we go to the zoo and year after year, it just got depressing, you know? To see, like, in, in at the L.A. Zoo, there's a giraffe. My backyard is bigger than the giraffe's enclosure. Wow, that's a know. crappy giraffe enclosure. Yeah. yeah, it's just sad. You can go see it right now. It, the giraffe is still there. It's a hundred-something outside. That oh, poor more, in there in a little stall, basically. Yeah, it's awful. Well, I, when it comes to keeping keeping exotic animals privately that's a uh, because i mean i i i'm surrounded by exotic animals if you want to get technical right now but do uh, you have a tiger no but i, <laughs> I these I, these are provided with the adequate habitat and uh yeah. we've actually saved quite a few via the uh via the uh, pet trade quite a few species of, of 
exotic, uh, especially tarantulas that only live. Like there's some that only live on this little island in the river that in the middle of the Amazon to just live on this little island or this top of this mountain. So they're very oh, isolated crazy. with very, very tiny populations. So if we can, and then they start developing that area and start shrinking that area that they can live in, the population shrinks. You see genetic bottlenecks. It's just bad for them. So we're able to spread them about uh, a bit when we when we can breed them in captivity and, and keep the the species going and keep their numbers up without having to worry that they're going to be. I mean, I, obviously, we need to worry that they're going to be wiped out in their natural habitat. But you know, it, at least we actually yeah. at my job we actually protected. Is am I the echo? I have a giant echo. Is it me? I have my headphones. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, maybe not. No. <laughs> so on my job, um, on the hill, we call it Tarantula Hill on the other on the back end of the offices. We did um, a giant solar job. I made sure that that hill was left alone. And you can see the, the tarantula spider webs on the hill and everything. Oh, that's so cool. I, I, since I was a little, my parents have owned the property as long as I could remember, and I went out of my way to make sure that um, that they were protected because they're just as part of the eco- they're a part of the ecosystem, just like everything else. You know, yeah, that's the thing too. They can be so isolated. They're still discovering new species of tarantulas in Southern California, like one of the most populated yeah. regions of the of the continent, and they're they're still finding new species within you know thirty miles of the city. Oh, there's a there's a running joke. They um, we bring them home on our clothes, like in mm-hmm. our toolboxes. They're in my house. My neighbor, my neighbor was like, she she asked me in Spanish. She's like, "Do you have tarantulas?" And I'm like, "Maybe," because she knows I'm the one that brings all the bugs into the na- <laughs> the neighborhood because the the property is out on the, on the outskirts. You know. Well, you put them in a box and then you send them to me. That's what you're supposed to do. With them. <laughs> I so will. I will. He'll do that for now. Both of you would like Australia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've already I've already no, tried you, to you don't the, you don't the wear the spider. You don't bring the spiders inside. The spiders bring you inside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard a long time ago, I heard Brain Bug say something about like at least I know where my black widow is. So I may I went out of my way. There are two black widows that live in the junction box in front of my house, <laughs> and there's one that lives in, in uh, my TARDIS blue truck that I'm selling. So I know where my black widows are, too. And they're yes, red belt. Yes. <laughs> That's an important thing to know, because it, I have my black widow in a, in, a con- in a container, but it's still releasing the pheromones into the environment that says this is my territory. So it, oh, yeah. it, 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 as far as this space goes, it's occupied by a black widow that I know exactly where it is. So I'm not going to stick my hand in a drawer or something and get. <laughs> I took that serious when he you, said that. You, I was like, "Oh, I got to look." To, you need a red back to go with your black widow, though. So I know. Okay. I do. So I have a question. Ours have red bellies. What does that mean? We we have ones with red red uh, backs and red stomachs in the uh, in the U.S. Uh, the a southern black widow can have patterns with white and red on its back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yeah, there's a few different varieties of both red backs and um, black widows. Yeah. It's yeah, not the red just, backs. It's still just one, one of one spot. <laughs> there's one red back right. and there's one black widow. No, there's a variety. And they're all. Well, every, every continent has their own latrodectus and they all have different names. Even New Zealand has its own yeah. that's, that's unique, that's kind of like the red back. The reason I bring that up is because the most, like the ones I see here, are um, red belly. Yeah, I see them on the property. You're, I see them in my house. You're yeah. looking at western western black widows, and they're going to have the, the traditional hourglass on their stomach for the most part. Northern black in the, widows too. I live in the suburbs too, so so like I live in the in basically that the high desert. So we get scorpions, all kinds of fun stuff here. Red racers. Ooh, I love it. Send them all to me. <laughs> you, can, you can have all of mine too. Well, I, I want them. I do. We're not I, allowed I to send food. them to 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 Brian, unfortunately, because um, our export laws about animals. So we can't actually send him a red buck, even though they're every fucking. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. Here, I'll go back. Me, uh, there's enough of them. We don't need any red backs in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're yeah, black like widows. The same thing. Mug. If you sent me a coffee mug and there was a red back in it, I mean, oops, you didn't mean to. You just put me a coffee mug. 
I'll send you a little, I'll send you a thing of coffee and there's a little red back right at the top of it. Oh my god. Oh, you, oh, you would you would love um Southern California. My house is infested with crickets. And so um instead of like, you know, getting bug spray, I just let the lizards come in my house. I have a house lizard. Ooh, that's cool. I'm not kidding you. And I don't have to feed it because my house is infested with crickets. And yeah. Yeah, they, we, we have the same you really thing. Do we need we have... to bring the tarantulas back, babe, because that's how <laughs> kill the crickets. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Yeah, driving that's me. why they're riding home from work with you. They, they want to the crickets. <laughs> Yeah, they want, yeah, that, yeah, they're after the crickets. That's why they're coming over. They can smell. They smell them like a boot, bro. <laughs> I, I have a question though, Brian. But so I've noticed because there are um, red backs here that don't always have the red back, and someone once told me that it was because, like, you get like yellows or oranges, and I was like, no, those are the males, and the females are the red. But I'm not sure. Is that no? Correct? It, so the males don't look anything like what you you won't you wouldn't recognize. Oh, maybe you would. I don't know. They're they're much smaller and they're kind of brown. Yeah. And they look uh, very similar to you all have like the we have European house spiders here. You all have them down there too, right? The little little brown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch Mom. of little brown spiders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we keep getting, the, we the keep getting huntsmen tiny. in our lab. That's huntsmen the only thing I like can, about winter yeah, is the bugs uh, in Australia settle down. You are confused, down Americans, to the, the if you say huntsmen because their their idea of what a huntsman is and ours is two entirely different things. <laughs> the huntsman in the US is not an arachnid. Is it brain bug? Uh, the, which hunts? Well, there, see, that's the, the problem. Yeah, with, there's so many different ones. Names. But the, the main one that you guys have, not huntsman, sorry, I'm thinking Daddy Longlegs. Sorry, yeah. I will, I'll correct myself. <laughs> Yeah, to us, uh, Sorry. daddy long legs are harvest men, which aren't spiders. spiders. Uh, you guys, they're but for us, but our, it, our daddy long legs are there. spiders, and I'll shut up about there. husband because you're right, Matt. Uh, I thought, Jen, I thought ours were arachnids, but not spiders, if that yeah, makes no, sense. Uh, Someone yes, told they're me arachnids, that. but they're not spiders. They've only got six legs or something. No, 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 yeah, that's the good. American one. Ours actually has, oh, that, has eight legs, yeah. Okay, but I know that they're not spiders. Uh, there's, okay, there's three... There's three in, uh, in, arthropods that are called daddy long legs there is the uh what you'd call maybe a crane fly uh or a mosquito hawk that's mm. uh, it looks like a, basically a giant mosquito with really long legs uh parts of the u.s they call those daddy long legs uh then there's harvest men which are like you said an arachnid but it's not a spider uh they, they like uh living around like wood piles and, and stuff like that uh and they're they they don't, aren't necessarily carnivores either. They're one of the few arachnids that, that the majority of the of the order don't consume or aren't, aren't predators. They are actually uh, detrivores and they like carrion and stuff. But I'm getting on a tangent. Sorry. And then the other one is uh, what's commonly called like a cellar spider. Uh, yeah, um, the the one we have here is a Euro, is a Euro, is was introduced from Europe. It's uh, a um, it is actually a spider. It's called. Uh, Phylocus uh, phalanogenides. Is it a fulcid? Yeah. It's a fulcid? Okay, yeah, that's uh, it's a cellar spider. Yeah. Yeah, it's cellar yeah. spiders. Yeah. And that's there, there there a few introduced you I can actually deal with without wanting to run out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Kitty? Um, what are the daddy long legs that do the real, like, wispy, like, cobwebby webs? I was going to ask the exact same question. <laughs> well, that's the cellar spiders. Yeah. We have them okay. here in Those are mass. the only thing that are allowed in my house because they're harmless and they eat bugs. So, like, I feel bad. Like, it's like I have one that likes to live behind my toilet. So, I'm really careful when I'm cleaning not to knock its little, like, web back there because there's also an exterior door to one of my bathrooms. And he'll like to hang out, like, right at the bottom of the door. So, when they I'm have... like, sweeping and everything. They I have prolific catches of insects and, and eaters of them. So having so, them is awesome. Like, I, I, I let them be. I feel bad when same. I notice them in the shower too late and they end up like flush down the drain because like I turn the water on and I'm like, well, sorry, home slice. You should have stayed under the toilet or by the door. You know, like I don't yeah. kill them on purpose, but I have, you know. Yeah, you I'm, know even, I'm even nice down. to crickets. I have grown to hate crickets and I'm even nice to them. 
when I catch him um, in the tub, I'm like, all right, this is an armistice for this one moment. <laughs> get out, get out of here. It's too easy I, to smash you in the tub. I, I, I've <laughs> definitely got arachnophobia. I, I wish I could deal with them. I can't. And really? I, I just, like, if I see a spider, I don't want to be in the same room. I don't want to be within a few meters of what it. What if it's on a screen? I, I, I even through a screen, I, 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 like, I can deal with it better now, a, a bit older, but even with a screen between me, I don't want to be anywhere what, what near about it. What about uh, like, like, what you are jumping like, spiders? Like like even this conversation yeah. is making me a little bit shifty oh, in my wow. seat. Sorry about yeah, oh, wow. I can't. I can't do it. Deal that's, with them very well. But, I, I was going to ask inject? um Brian to get out his tarantula so we could see it, but I don't think you, it will. You, no, no, I mean you can do that. I can always move my screen, like, <laughs> and I can cope with it somewhat. But I it it's so frustrating because the thing is when it comes to like say snakes, reptiles, or rodents or whatever. I can deal with it so well. I am Rodents not afraid of problem. anything except um, <laughs> spiders and some other bugs like cockroaches. I have a, a oh, pretty yeah, much them. the same so, reaction to. I thought I thought I could hang. A long time ago, um, a friend of mine had these giant illegal Argentine boa constrictors or something. And he would always talk about them. And I, we, we worked at Service Master, which basically we, we went in and redid a house after the fi after fire damage so the fire department would come in and put out your fire we would redo someone's house so one day he's like he's like hey can i get a ride home i'm like yeah he's like will you take me by the pet store so i took him to the pet store he bought full grown rabbits i'm telling you i've seen some crazy stuff in my life i um i and i'm not gonna get into it but long story short I couldn't hang even listening to rabbits being eaten by boa constrictors. Oh. I, I went in this house. I'm like, I can't hang. I went and sat on the patio until it was over. And because these things were huge. And he and he was not nice to the rabbits either. And, you know, maybe I've watched to Toy Story too many times. I, I'm Let nice to down. everything. <laughs> well, I say thank you to my Alexa. You know, <laughs> Doc, Doc, you do. You do realize that you're never, ever more than five to ten feet away from a spider, right? Yeah, I do, and okay. it gets me checking. Like, I know there's a couple that hide in the corner in the office, and occasionally by the door. What? And what's I, that? They do come for you at, at night. Um, what's the? What's that biomass? Don't be no. mean, Jen. No, no but what's the? What's Jen, the biomass of ants? Does anyone know I, that? Like, oh, the, ooh, it, that it, keeps me well, up at night. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's ridiculously big. They're they're just like they're just broken wasps. Ants are oh. broken wasps. But when I heard how much, um, like, if they, they were all disappeared, but, like, how much is the biomass? I heard some weird statistic that, like, if all the ants disappeared, uh, the earth the earth would be lighter. Am I, I wrong? Mean, yeah, but I think still 95% of all animal mass is nematodes, so worms. Oh. Or, the, there's or like, um, like singular uh, cells. Yeah, yeah some of the, uh, I just well, I, that's why I said animals. Billion? So of the animals, that's it's the, the nematodes. I think ten billion. It, 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 the, okay, so the biomass in million tons is three thousand million tons. Uh -huh. How does that even work? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it, it's more than the mass of humans. It's like ten times the mass of all yeah, humans. More than together. cattle too. So. <laughs> really? so Ants outnumber. Ugh. I, I stay up at night thinking about stuff like that. I, I can't deal with spiders. I can deal with ants. Ants don't worry me as bad. And I've been, like, I used to do lots of camps at school. I was in cadets. And our cadets wouldn't even give us proper tents. We would be sleeping in the Australian bush before winter came Ugh. with, a, like, a, just a plastic tarp. And you'd lie there. And I. so what you do is you get your sleeping bag, you'd roll it up, and then just coat your face in um, repellent, insect repellent. And hope they don't come near you. And for the most part, most insects don't want to come near you, something the size of you. The the main problem you'll get is bites from uh, mainly mos mosquitoes. We've got, got a couple of nasty ants, but yet still people were, it was always the spiders that would get me. Um, but I can deal with those circumstances. I just, as long as it's not in front of me and I'm not in a room. Yeah, but I, spiders just want to bite you. It's the ants that want to eat you. The spiders bite. do not want to bite you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. They don't want to bite me. I just, uh, it, it's an instinct. It's like, I, I did hear it was arachnophobia has been linked to like a 
genetic mutations about 10,000 years old. Well, it's uh, if, if, if every one of your ancestors up till now is because of that fear that's being passed down genetically through your, your lineage that your ancestors were able to survive and not get eaten or bit by venomous spiders because they had that reaction mm. to it. So it's a positive trait that most of us, most mm. have been weeded out from, from our, our genes, but we still, we still have that response. So you have to force yourself to overcome it. Um, in order to yeah, I, I, I thought like I like I, I I'd like to, and I'm slowly getting better. But it's it's like an instinct. It's not something I have any control of. Well, I just see one. I agree with you. I I get paid to move, remove rattlesnakes, and move them, and I'm still scared of them. I have full gear and everything, and I have respect and a really long pole. <laughs> I, <laughs> but like, you know, I've been dealing with them for years. Ooh. Oh, I had a mate. Oh, that reminds me. I've I have a mate. This was actually only a few weeks ago. Well, maybe a couple of months ago now. I, I was having a chat with him and he was saying that they came across a red belly black snake, which is one of the most venomous snakes in the world. It's, it's number one, I think. They're not particularly aggressive. That's the only thing. So we've got brown snakes here, which are the aggressive ones, but slightly less venomous. Both will kill you though if they bite you. Um, mm. If you don't get anti venom, but because we've got so much anti venom everywhere in this country, it's not too bad. Yeah, and they came across it at work. His response to this really venomous snake, he has no gear, no training, nothing to deal with these snakes, picks it up by the tail and, in his words, yeets it over the road. <laughs> and I'm just like, what are you doing? That thing is deadly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'll tell you Oprah. flat. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Bro. Oh, I was just yeah, I was just saying that they're related to cobras now. That same kind of uh, kind of venom that's uh, really potent to people. The I think the brown snake though that, that's that's such a uh, the name is just so plain and boring for a snake that that's I think it's one it, it's either in the top three venomous snakes in the world mm -hmm. depending on how you measure venomous. Uh, but it's uh, also aggressive. <laughs> That's the problem with the brown snake. Is I it could actually be number aggressive. two from yeah. memory, but again, I think number one is one of the sea snakes. I think you're right. Because I think Australia to... has, we've got like eight out of the top ten most venomous snakes in the world, including first place and second place. But yeah, I think as Brian would say, it could depend on how you define I, that. I, I, I was about to say thought, you have a arachnophobia. The eastern brown snake and, is now considered the most venomous in the world. You live somewhere where the snakes so it's not are only the, the most snakes aggressive, are. it's the most, <laughs> it's the most yeah, venomous. It's... I'll, I'll tell you. Think, I thought I heard that snakes were the most venomous. What kind? Sea snake. A sea snake? The most aggressive or most venomous? I heard most most venomous. I, I don't know. They are up there. I don't know. Uh, that's why I was. And the the problem is, is some of these species, some species don't come into contact with people enough for us to really understand how their venom mm. would affect humans. So there may be a species that we were well aware of, maybe a species of viper or something that has a, a really deadly venom, and we've just never haven't had enough exposure to them wow. for us to really know or done any research on the venom. And that's dangerous too when we talk about these rare snakes back in the you know the corners of these exotic locations with no anti-venom uh even thought of for that species absolutely you've got some back corners like that too yeah Apparently so you have to be the mainland tiger snake is now considered the second most venomous snake in the world and i always thought the tiger snake was well down the list so ah there you go well, i you always know, thought the the red belly was up there the red it's belly. one of those things a, like I don't know what its because... name is though so because I'm in nature, I just treat everything like it's venomous and respect it, and I leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, you, see, that's the only way you can live in Australia. You just assume it can kill you. Yeah, exactly. yeah. We've even got two... The, if it's not trying to kill you, species. it's at least thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, but even here here in California, I, I, ha I got to find those on those pictures. When Isaiah was, like, high chair age... I'm sitting there. He's watching Nick Jr. I'm I'm in the backyard. Yeah, no, fine. Just, uh, it's it's just so long ago. It's back when I smoked cigarettes. I'm smoking a cigarette. He's sitting in his high chair. I see a baby bird in my backyard. The baby bird's chilling. A hawk swoops right in and grabs the baby bird and starts eating it in my backyard. And I'm like, 
get out of here. The hawk just flew off with the baby bird in its claws. Was like, F you, I'm going to take my food and go somewhere else. Like, it's it's crazy here, you know? We it's have. Kind of Florida, like Florida's the Australia of the U.S. Like we have a lot of shit here that just you know you, you either got, want you to got alligators or can and poisonous you. shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Swap well, land. See, although, suing story that yeah that reminds me because I feed uh, birds on my backyard in our backyard on the veranda. They have their specific spots. We got kookaburras, magpies, currawongs, butcher birds. Oh wow! Um, occasionally we'll get others, so sort of parrots like lorikeets showing up but not as rare and the kookaburras are fascinating they're very curious they're very dopey looking compared to the other birds but if they spot something up in the air like a hawk they don't they, they look at they just follow they don't go anywhere so i can tell when they've spotted either a plane or like an eagle or hawk or whatever it is that's <laughs> flying around because they just they're, and they're not interested in me um aren't kookaburras um, um part of the uh, kingfisher family yeah Yes, they they the largest kingfishers, and there's what six, seven species or subspecies. We've wow. got the biggest one around here is just the like the common kookaburra, but you get the blue kookaburra is the next biggest one. And they have some of the noisiest crows in the world. <laughs> you do, yes, you do. Your crows well, yeah. smoke cigarettes. No, your crows smoke cigars, and they're playing poker. Our our crows go. They like get in their beamers and go to work every We're day. Like, and they're what, lawyers what here. What the fuck's that noise again? It's crows. <laughs> they're outside. The <laughs> well, see right. the crows. The crows in my neighborhood do battle with the bald eagles. <laughs> the crows are crazy. Crows are crazy. The crows are, crazy fuckers, yeah. the crows are the smartest dinosaurs. The crows are they are, crazy. They are oh that yeah. That's uh, and that whole like family and Corvid. genus of birds is really smart. Like the magpies are somewhat closely related. And I feed them. They're great at remembering faces, so they know who I am. The the ones in our area. They also can be aggressive when they when they're not happy with you. But we had like they've learnt that if they want our attention and we're not feeding them, they'll sit on our kitchen window and just watch us, or at least the, the male does. But he was there the other day. He's just sitting on the windowsill. And mum was saying he just bent down and picked up a giant spider, like a giant ass spider, and just ate it. <laughs> oh, wow. Mag magpies are a corvid, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're what? They're corvids. Cor corvid? mm. Ravens, crows, magpies, and rooks, corvids. Yeah. Do you know what we have here, which are, are some of the most evil birds I've come across? They're absolutely beautiful. Are blue jays? Yes. <laughs> blue jays are the most evil. If they're, if, if blue, you know, during the winter, um, it's like San Juan Capistrano here in Southern California. We have birds everywhere. We get some of the most exotic birds. I can tell when blue jays are in the neighborhood because no other birds are around. Because <laughs> blue jays, they're gangsters. They do not joke around. And they, they'll attack humans. They'll attack squirrels, cats. They do not care. <laughs> at, at, my, at my shop, um, we used to feed the birds. And we had this blue jay in the neighborhood. And it would periodically come into the tree where we kept the bird feeder and just scare everything away. And then it would just kind of like stand there and look like stand there like Mussolini and looking over everything. Was, They're yeah, evil. Okay, this is my neighborhood. <laughs> Fuck you. Get out. They're so, so evil. The, and he leaves. The, magpie, the magpies though have a reputation here and it's quite deserved. I got mobbed for my lunch once by six magpies. Oh, wow. like I was, I, I made the mistake of trying to eat a chicken roll and chips on the train station platform because all our train lines are around where I live are above ground. And I, I'm just like, it's like 20 minutes to the next train. It was middle of the day. So I'm just like, oh, I'll just sit down. And like half a chip broke off and landed on the ground. One magpie saw it and got it. The rest, and they normally only uh, like have territory in pairs, but there was for some reason around here because all the shops, there was six of them. And they all saw that and they all gathered. There's like four at my feet. <laughs> There's one sitting like on the chair. It's just like a park bench. He's sitting oh. right there. And I'm watching him being like, you're awfully close for a wild bird. And I'm going to eat a chip. And the one on the ground just goes, thump, like oh. close to my face. And just takes it. I had to like hold the chips like, like, like in my hand like that. So they couldn't, oh, couldn't make wow. Them. Oh, wow. In the left, was, but it was just like they were—they they knew I wasn't going to hurt. Them. So I watched. Um, 
I watched Inside Edition, Australia, the Australia version. It literally made me scared of those birds. They made it seem there. There's a there's a video of a of a young girl on a bike, and there's a magpie attacking her. She's on her bike. Yeah. She's like, ah! She, oh, yeah, they're aggressive. Oh, really common. I was like, hell no. They, but it's only 15, about 10, 15 percent of magpies that do that. It's a learnt behaviour, but they'll swoop people during when they've got young. So they they breed really weird. From, so most birds, once the birds leave the nest, they can fly. Magpies, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. The juveniles can't fly for another six weeks. So they end up just walking around the ground. And because they're on the ground and vulnerable, the parents will attack anything that comes near it that they think's a threat. So, but because they can remember faces, if they remember you, if you chase them off, even like, several years before when you come back they'll be like that guy's a threat and i've got a kid but they will sometimes attack for no reason wow, but if they're wow. familiar with you they're much like less likely to attack so, so but said, it's learned behavior <laughs> it like grows and keeps the next generation in your face sorry are you are they like crows in that they will teach the next generation of birds about your face i'm not sure i, I don't i don't know if they can do that <laughs> The crows, uh, the crows in my area, we did feed for a while, but they're so mean to the other birds, we stopped. But they were more scared of me than the magpies were. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the problem with corvids in general, is you can't befriend them and, and befriend any other birds or wildlife at all because they will bully the crap out of anything else that tries to come in between you mag and them. I've t my magpies and my currawongs, currawongs also fall into that too. They, they have a really nice sounding whistle when they, when they do make noise. They, they're like a cross between a magpie and a uh, crow or a raven. And they've learned, they will fight each other, but they've learned not to do it in front of me because they won't get fed. So they, they, they have their own spots on the veranda that I feed them and they're slowly learning. They gotta be behaved, but, huh? Yeah, but the co the kookaburras don't. They'll you feel just like stand, the they'll stand there. Park standing out there, you put your hands up like you're feeding them. Maybe get them back. <laughs> do, do I can get. I got. Oh, I can get my magpie to sit on my arm very briefly. Um, Jen, is there any way I can share my screen? I can. Uh, I could probably find one. that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I have oh, okay. Set up to do it. Do, do the crows in Australia um, go after owls? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to wind up the stream as well, because I have to hit the road soon, because I've got to head down to Albany, because my brother's still in hospital, so I've got some stuff I've got to take down there and that, so, um, yes, I have to wind the stream up a bit. Um, this was a kind of impromptu stream. Awesome. Yeah. But, this was an awesome amount of fun, and thank you all for joining us, and um, making it all brilliant. So um, let's go around. Um, Matt, what have you got coming up? Well, I'm, I've written the script for my next video. I am hoping to publish one on Nevadia's channel as well. I've made my part, but it's just waiting on other things to occur. Next video I'm going to do will be on Schrodinger's cat. And I'm thinking of doing a longer video in the near future about what alien life might look like if it's found in this sol solar system. Ooh. So, uh, but I'm I'm still thinking about how I'm going to go about that one. I'm probably going to look at the different environments we might find it in and what, what we might expect. Uh, that is really interesting considering some of the new Viruses. discoveries around the solar system. So. Yeah, so so we can take a trip to Jupiter and Saturn and the moons there. Oh, definitely Saturn. Um, awesome. Mm. So, that's we'll that's what I got coming up. That sounds awesome. Um, Brian, what you've got coming up? Uh, well, I have this Jordan Peterson uh, lobster thing I'm doing. I started throwing it together oh, for. Oh, uh, I'm supposed to have done you something for that. <laughs> yeah, you, you still got time. I do. I, 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 I'm finishing it up tomorrow night. So if you send it, send it to me before that, I still got a spot for you. All right, no worries. I will. Uh, I, I won't. I'll get it done when I get back. This later this afternoon. So yeah. You guys will be no rush. I got it's it, it's bedtime here for me, so I'll I'll be. Yeah, have it tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I've been very but, sidetracked. Uh, yeah, so yeah. you've got that. You, you've got some streams coming up? Or? I do. I you know, got my show on Saturday mornings. Uh, that I'll be doing. Uh, do uh, 
we get some science and debunk some woo and make fun of conservapedia and stuff like that. So if you like that sort of thing, that's uh, that's 9 a.m. Uh, or 9, 9.30 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time in the U.S. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Jenny, what do you got coming up? Well, on, on Wednesday I, at noon, I will be on Purple's um, Midday Chat. And on Thursday at midnight, I'll be on Purple's Midnight Chat. And then, of course, on Friday, we will have movie night, assuming that our, uh, um, um, oh, well, I don't know what I should call her anymore. The Drink! <laughs> Drink. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, is able to, be able to make it to the show, and that would be 1030 Eastern um, this, on the Sci-Fi channel. <laughs> awesome. So, Kitty, what are you coming up? Um, pretty much just whatever we're doing on Thursday, um, yeah. and working on this quilt. Awesome. On the quilt. More, so, expect to see more more film footage of Kitty working, <laughs> which is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, although you know, maybe maybe I will make some nice uh, lingerie on stream <gasps> at some point because well, like, I like am in love stream. with this fabric. Mm. It's actually got roses in it. Hey, that's the that's that the tiger print like we were talking about, you guys. That's exactly. <laughs> you I that. my measurements. I, I like how we all go it. places with the screen. What? <laughs> Kitty, advertise that on the transvestite channels. You'll get tons of viewers. <laughs> I should. Uh, I'd wear that right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Wear lingerie, okay, babe, lingerie. go and do your thing. I just want right, to make me feel sexy. What's wrong with that? <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all, Brian. Nothing. Okay. It's called living your life. <laughs> and you know what? That's what we do on the Godless Sewing channel. I and the every... Sewing channel day. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to... I'm trying to... I was trying to shill. Hold on. See, I gotta do... Okay, hold on. I gotta start no, all over. Wait, hold on. We, we jacked it all up. It's okay. Hi. Do you like tire fires that you can see from outer space? Do you like do you like sewing? Come down to the Godless Sewing channel because I am Godless Sewing every Wednesday. Let's see. Um, Maddie from Sign Side Up, Sam Chaos, and myself. We have a podcast called Pub Religion on Sam Chaos's channel, and every Thursday we do the Sewing Circle if the What the Fuck show is not functioning at the time. And depending on what's going on this this Thursday, if you're lucky and if you're there, I'll show you my cheese balls. <laughs> so go subscribe. Come down to the Godless Sewing channel. We don't know. It's a it's a mess. Come on down. It's hot. It was 111 here yesterday. It was 109 here today. <laughs> no, he did have to wearing, wipe his brow. He had to wipe his taint. I'll be I'll be wearing less. Oh, this, I have long hair. Are you kidding me? My eyebrows protect me from everything. <laughs> <laughs> Your entire personality is housed in those eyebrows. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, they pop out of. <laughs> Yeah, we can see, we can still tell exactly all your emotions are right there. Yeah, where's everything on his sleeve? <laughs> okay, so yes, there should be a um, uh, what the fuck show this week because uh, I am back and I'm available. So uh, I, uh, Kitty, Will, and I have not actually discussed the topic yet, but we will be doing something um, as per usual, and everyone who's around. That'll be uh, Friday morning for those of us in Australia, uh, Thursday night for anyone in the US. Uh, always a lot of fun. So uh, that'll be on. I'm back because I'm back. Uh, this weekend there will be a, um, another Schrodinger's bathtub where I'll be talking science and stuff like that. So that'll be a bit of fun. Um, awesome. As well. So uh, I'm hoping, uh, but I haven't confirmed it with it yet, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get Maddie on for that from Maddie from Science Side Up. So. So that'll be a bit of fun. Uh, it might also mean that I'll have to change the time frame when it's on, on on Saturday. It might be a bit later in Australia so that Maddie's actually up to do that, which would be unfortunate for Matt because I'd like to, Matt to meet up because he's kind of awesome. Um, but yeah, we got uh, got that happening. Um, uh, there'll be probably another um, round table at some point during, during not this week, but next week. 
um, as well because it's always fun to grab friends together and just chat about shit because it's what we tend to do anyway. Um, and as I've said, um, I will go. I'm going to be doing some pre-recorded videos again, so that, look out for a few of those. That they'll all be. I'm going to try and keep them all down under ten minutes so that they're shorter, so that it just it, it, it just gives you facts about certain things that I want to talk about. But it'll all be sciencey related because. That's kind of the direction I want to, aside from the discussion panels that we have, I want to try to move a lot of my stuff that I'm doing into to more science discussion because, um, yeah, it's my, I, it's what I love. <laughs> so I may as well do what I love. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, but again, well. Yeah. I, I was just wondering why, why is it that your balls have that uh, dusty orange <laughs> stuff all over them? Oh, it's because the Republicans can't get off. The Republicans cannot get off of them. That's why. It, it's, it's because they've I been riding my nuts. nuts. They've, <laughs> they've been riding my nuts for years. It, it's because I insisted he improved the flavor. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Cheese is a horrible flavor. <laughs> Strawberries, uh, you know. Oh, great way. Great way to end the stream. <laughs> it is. It really is. All right. Thank you, everyone, for um, watching. Anybody who comes in later and watches the stream, uh, the links to all these lovely people are be is below in the description, and I have managed to keep it up to date during the stream, so that's awesome. Please go sub to them. I now have a Patreon as well. My Patreon links is down in the description, so if you've got a few dollars and can help support the channel, which will actually help support the What The Fuck Show and other things that um, Kitty Will and I are doing, because uh, we've got we've got plans, and uh, that I've put a lot of my plans on the back burners for stuff because uh, stuff I've been doing with my brother. But I want to get back into it because there were things that we really wanted to do. You have an actual real life. Is what I, it's I have a real you life. A yeah. real but life. <laughs> unfortunately, it's taking control of everything lately. But, um, I, I still want to get this other stuff done. These projects that um, we've been talking about, and 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 the Patreon will help support that. It'll help put money into better equipment for doing the stuff and. And me being able to spend more time doing some of the production as well and stuff like that. So, it's, so anyone who can support, that's awesome. Uh, but don't feel obliged. And, um, yeah, thank you all again. And um, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Oh, and don't choke on the selfie stick. <laughs> something, something selfie stick. <laughs>